broadcasting on the BBC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the BBC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 75 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with Trevor and Damon. We got the whole crew here as usual. How's it going, fellas? 75th? Isn't that supposed to be like a special episode or something? Though? There's fireworks going off. You don't <laughs> hear them, but um, there's fireworks and I, I don't know. What's the 75th? We're, we're still creeping up on the on the, hun- on the 100th episode. We still got a little while yet, though. Yeah, I guess we'll have to do something. Like, who who do we bring on? I, maybe we should have everybody we've ever had on come on. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Could we do that? Is that possible? I mean, it technically for like five minutes. <laughs> for five minutes, so you can just come on for five minutes. You get your five minutes. You get like one little part of the episode. That would be kind of cool. It, it would be like one of those Disney specials where they, you know, jump yeah. around between all the different. Ooh, I like that, oh, Tom. I, yeah. you, you said it. You said it jokingly, but I think I like it a lot. It's a lot of production work for me to do, but I'll. I mean, you know, I can do it's it. Hundredth episode. <laughs> yeah, it's a hundredth episode. We still got a little while before the hundredth. We got we're on seventy five now. But yeah, but I, oh gosh, you know, it's like a year, isn't it? What's that? <laughs> isn't that like a year? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Twenty five yeah. times two, right? That's yeah. a year. Okay, we got a longer time than I thought. You're right. We we're, we'll be time. in time for the the fiftieth, won't we? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we should do something for our three year anniversary in April. Okay. That's, you know, we have our three year anniversary of the podcast coming up in April. So that's pretty cool. Well, I'm going to get a little cupcake with a candle and there you go. I don't, I don't we'll know how s- you'll know that I'm eating it on the air, but <laughs> we'll get special <laughs> buttons and wear that. We'll just tell you we're wearing them. Yeah. Um, golden, yeah. Buttons, golden buttons. Golden buttons. Golden buttons. That's we'll right. still need to make some golden buttons. <laughs> oh, you got to love it. <laughs> yeah. So we have a lot to talk about today, though. We, which is we good do at. have a lot to talk about. We we got a lot of great questions in the uh, in the Disney group in our group, I should say. Yeah, in the Disney group. Yeah, the Disney Welcome Home Waitlist. The one podcast. That <laughs> what the the group that matters? Yeah, it's the only group that, that matters. matters. The, the group with the nice people. That's more of what it is, right? I, I nice can't people. believe we haven't gotten any mean people in that group yet. It's amazing. Yeah, no, that's a good thing. Don't don't yeah. jinx us, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think so. Listen, the, the, eventually we're going to have to ban somebody from that group. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> eventually. But we haven't had to yet. Yes, we'll see how long that goes on. So the first question I have on here is from Catherine, and I, I kind of tried to create a little game here. We're going to call it Fast Pass Rope Dropper Standby slash skip. <laughs> so, and this, this game is going to be Hollywood Studios now that we have three tier one rides at Hollywood Studios. So you have to say which one you fast pass, which one you rope drop, and which one you skip or do standby for. Ooh. So we have Mickey and Minnie's Runaway, we're all way. Smuggler's Run. It's tough because we don't know what that is yet. We okay. don't. It's tough, but you got to mm-hmm. speculate. And then Slinky Dog Dash. So, uh, wh- wh- whoever wants to go first. Okay. I'll, I'll go first. Um, ooh. Okay, fast pass. Uh, okay, fast pass would be Smuggler's Run for me. Rope drop would be Mickey and Minnie's, and then standby Slinky Dog Dash. Okay, so see, see now that now that Trevor said it, now I have a better idea because you know what, Trevor, I would give you that, but I think that the caveat to this 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 discussion and question is what time of year is it? Because if it's hot out. Then, then I have to fast pass Slinky Dog Dash because it's hot over there, okay, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to yeah. take Smuggler's Run as probably my standby because the queue's really cool. And then I'm I'm going to rope drop Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway because I'm assuming this is in a time frame that's pretty close, so that's still going to be a new ride. So considering all that, that's that's what I'm doing. Okay, that's that's fair. I, I guess my only thing on Slinky Dog Dash is my my thought would be do it in the evening, so I would ignore the. Oh, you know, I'm not there in the evening, so you know that <laughs> changes fair. things for me. <laughs> that's fair. Well, what about they you? do have a covered queue now, though they they did cover the whole queue, so it's not as bad as it used to be. Yeah, it's still outside though, so it, yeah. And, unless it's one of those things where it's covered all the way to the ground on both sides, you're <laughs> with still air conditioning. Be, yeah, with air conditioning, <laughs> and I still have a problem with that. So you mean indoors? Is what you're saying? That's pretty much what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to break the rules a little bit here, and I'm going to say Fast Pass Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and Rope Drop Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. 
So the reason I'm saying that is I like, I do this all the time. We, we tend to do this with Soren or where we'll rope drop Soren, go ride it and then have our first fast pass of the day be Soren and then just ride it again. The double uh, down. Yeah. Double down. And since this is a new ride, I want to ride it twice because I want to get the whole experience. You know, there's, if there's a lot of different details on this, which it seems like stand by and both those other ones is going to be brutal. That's the end of your day at that point. That's that's true. See, but here's the thing. I don't feel I like Slinky Dog Dash, but I don't feel like I have to ride it. So I would probably go, uh, smuggler's dog skip and then go skip Slinky Dog Dash. Skim, skip Slinky Dog Dash. That's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. that's that's the way I'm rolling on this one. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm not surprised, I because you don't like roller coasters anyway, so. I, I do like roller coasters. I <laughs> keep I, saying that, Trevor, but that's not true. And we all know it's not true. Everybody knows it's not true. My favorite ride at Disney is Big Thunder. I, I will ride that a hundred times in a row if I could. <laughs> so that that's almost like what People Mover is at this point. What Big Thunder? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I just in terms of ride. coasters, right? I mean, I love that ride. It's fun. Hey, listen, you can love that ride, but it's not like um, a coaster. I guess it is. Like, I wish there was something that was like below a coaster and above people mover. Cause that's where that ride sits. It's almost like Splash Mountain. I, well, I mean, yeah, what, what, yeah, what would you call it? Like not, not an extreme coaster, but not a, not a dark ride. Yeah. There's a weird in between there. You're right. I don't know how to describe a family it. coaster. Yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah. That's a, I think that's a good way to describe it. That is definitely a family coaster. Yeah, I, I would call it a family coaster. Although I have to say, when my my stepmother on our last trip, she'd never been on it before, went on it. She was screaming the entire, and she's someone that goes on pretty much everything. And she was screaming the whole time and yelling obscenities as children looked on, uh, <laughs> and and hitting my father and asking why he he let her go on did, that. <laughs> did I did, did, did I ever tell you the story of what? My gosh, my daughter's going to be so mad if she ever listens to this in the future. So we again, she's not really a coaster person either. And when we were at Bush Gardens and we went on. Ver- Bolton and she bit me because she was just so mad that like I took her on Verbolton like wait, she bit me. She, wait, did she bite you while it was going? Or yeah, afterwards? yeah, no, no, no. Wow, while, while it was going because she was like upset and it was scary and she was mad. And that's like a dark ride coaster and she she bit me. That like that teeth marks happen. bite, like teeth mark bites. Like like I got off and I was like I kind of hurt a little bit. I think she was like nine. It's not like she was like super old either. I mean super young. Like it was she was nine. She bit me. It happens. I mean, you know, it happens. But she did tell me to never tell that story. So again, hopefully she doesn't listen to this when she like grows up and goes, Oh my goodness, I can't believe you told me that story. But then again, if she's grown up, hopefully it wouldn't be that big of a deal anymore either. Yeah. Uh, you would hope that the, she wouldn't still remember that and be like embarrassed by it or anything. Exactly. <laughs> and at least, That's... you know, she has a fight or flight or, you know, uh, <laughs> she has the fight or flight response, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's the coaster. I, well, I feel like I don't want to ruin the, the, the surprise in that coaster, but I feel like everybody one? knows it, right? And for Bolton. Yeah, you, you, you know what? Like, it's definitely one of those things that you, you don't want people to know before you ride it, for sure. Okay, so I won't ruin it then. Go ride Verbolton, and you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, so you've ridden Verbolton? I have not. I'm just a coaster enthusiast, and I know these things. <laughs> Trevor, he just said he's a coaster enthusiast that doesn't that's, ride roller coasters. That's exactly right. From afar. Yeah. He, he I'm, a wine, I'm a wine I'm a wine enthusiast that doesn't drink wine. Does I, that make sense? Can, that's totally possible, yeah. How? It is. I love I love roller coasters. I love looking at them. I love learning about them. I love knowing about them. It doesn't mean I always like to ride them. <sighs> okay. I don't even know how to respond to that. I'm just going to have to let that go. I, I am going to commit right now to on this show, though, to uh, at Moonlight Magic. I am going to ride Space Mountain. If if anybody that's coming with wants to co- come with me on Space Mountain, you can do so. But we are going to do Space Mountain. At, at oh, Moonlight. snap. You're there actually you going to ride Space Mountain. That's right. We're going to do I it. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I, this is the whole thing is funny to me because it's not like I don't want to ride it. It's not like I'm scared of it or anything. I just have no, never gotten is. around to riding it. No, it is. It's not you haven't, it, you can't say that you've been to Disney that many times and just haven't gotten around to riding it. You might not be scared, but you're anxious. I mean, I guess, but yeah, yeah I mean, and it's the first time. Like, th- there's something special about the first time. I would agree, especially that ride in general. Yeah, I feel like that I'm going to be from what everyone tells me. I feel like I'm going to be hurting after I get off of it. So, uh, like it's four year old no that matter. ride that ride. You'll be okay. You'll be all right. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> so do we want to move on to the next question from yeah, Ashley? There's a lot of questions here. Yeah. yeah. We're 10 Don't, minutes in and we've talked about one thing. Yeah. We, and we have a lot we have of like other 50. things to talk about. <laughs> we, we got a lot of things to talk about. All right. Who wants to read this one? Start this one. Off. All right. Go ahead, Trevor. I, okay. I got it. Uh, so Ashley asks, do you guys have a Disney slash DBC bucket list for myself? I, I think the biggest thing would be club 33 at some point. Outside of that, I don't really know if I have anything else on my bucket list at this point. Oh, okay. So I would say that mine is probably just to stay at every DVC resort at Disney World. I'm going to keep it at that. So it's um, something that I might actually be able to accomplish, but that, that's probably on my bucket list at this point. I, that one's on my bucket list too. Uh, but I, I think right now my bucket list has got to be Club 33. So got to make that happen. Yeah, that's, that's weird. I guess the weird thing about DVC is when, when you talk about bucket list, it, 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 because you know that you're going to have so many opportunities to be there, it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to say there's something that I absolutely have to do because kind, kind of your point, Damon, you know, you have so much time to go and, and try all these different things. I, I, I don't know if I feel like it needs to be a bucket list. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I get that. And, and that's when it says, you know, it says DVC Disney. So I guess mine's more Disney, right? Cause it's, yeah. it's Club 33. It's not necessarily DVC related, but I do have the same desire as Damon to stay at every single resort. So I guess that would be my bucket list thing. But yeah, I, you, to your point, these things are attainable, right? Because we go so often, we can eventually make these things happen. Although Club 33 is a, is a tall order, right? It's, it's not, not the easiest thing to get done. You, you need to know somebody. So, or have a lot of money, you know, one or the other. Actually, sorry, I, I'm going to amend that. There is one other thing I would bucket list because it, it's things that will never, ever happen is the Cinderella suite in the castle. If I could stay in there one day, that would be a huge bucket list thing, too. I'll tell you another thing I would love to do, too. And this is this is a nerdy thing to want. Uh, I would love to have you know how they do those dinners with Imagineers. Mm-hmm. I would love to do a dinner with an Imagineer, but have it be Joe Rody. Done. That's interesting. He does wow. those. I, I've seen people post before that they did dinner with Imagineer and then he shows up. <laughs> so I don't know how you get to pull that guy, but. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to be the one that pushes this along. Cause again, I think okay. that we're going to end up running out of time at some point. <laughs> oh, so, you're going to be the one that <laughs> pushes this along today? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that something new? Yeah, sure. That's uh, you want to read Dorothy's question? I do. That? I do. Cause okay. this probably pertains more to me than, than yeah, this is really a question for you. Yeah. Sure. You're probably the best to answer this one. So, so Dorothy asks the best Disney plans itinerary for a teenager. I'm taking my 14 year old niece in June. She's been once as a little girl, y- y- you know, it's, it's interesting because I, I want to say like it's different than I have a 14 year old now as well. I have 16 year old, both boys, but I, I don't, and I have a daughter that's nine, almost 10. I, I don't think it really makes too much of a difference. I, I don't think it's much different than going as an adult. I'm absolutely honest with you. I think it's kind of the same. So if I'm going to say, you know, I don't know too much besides, you know, what you kind of put there. I'm assuming you're going to go to every park. The only thing I would say is that. The kids did enjoy, especially at that age, depending on the time of year, going to the water parks. I thought that was fun. And the other thing that I thought was a little different that my kids, again, I didn't think they would enjoy as much as they did was mini golf. I thought those were two things that maybe are a little bit out of the ordinary that they really did enjoy as a teenager. Because what ends up happening is, is that when you're, you're a little bit younger, even though they make the mini golf for little kids, like you kind of, you know, the holes are a little bit easier to, you know, they're kind of slanted a little bit, but you know, when your kids are a little bit older, they can take a little bit more time and have a little bit more fun with it. I, I thought those were two things. And again, you know that I'm a big foodie there and I mean, teenagers love to eat. So that would be something else that I would kind of consider as part of the, out of the ordinary Disney plans, that those would be the things like trying different crazy foods, would be something that would be kind of fun, especially with the teenagers. They're more apt to do that than maybe a younger kid would be. So those would be the things that I would personally say outside of the regular normal rides. I don't know if you guys had any thoughts though. I, you know, the mini golf course, I definitely agree with. I, I love the mini golf course that Disney. They're super fun and they're, and they're not like really easy either. They're, they're pretty challenging. You know, my, my, my son got one of the, he was the, like the, the best of the week or month or whatever it was and got a special, um, 
written uh, certificate and everything. He had he had a fun time. Nice. Yeah. I, I I would say maybe uh, some of the tours that they offer too. I, I don't know if any. Ah, you know. See, it's, and I, I'm going to have to not knowing the teenager per se. I'm going to disagree a little bit with that. Just knowing the teenager mentality, <laughs> not knowing that specific teenager is that I don't think there's a lot of appreciation for most teenagers because of the way they consume personally. Sure. But that's just me. I think a tour is a great idea. I think that you would remember a little bit more, a little bit older than 14 that, you know, for my 14 year old is attached to his phone. If he was on a tour with his phone, I'd want to smack it out of his hands right at the end of the day. So uh, depending the on I'm the think- teenager, the only one I'm thinking of that would be great for a teenager would be like the wild Africa track because you're doing like, you're, you're walking over like a wooden bridge. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Like and, that one would be cool for a teenager. I and I think the other cool teenager thing is, I guess I forgot about it. my kids did it a little bit before they were teenagers, but I know that they would enjoy it. Now is that surfing class at Typhoon Lagoon. That was really cool too. Yeah. That's, it, that also depends on how strong a swimmer they are. There are two, right? No, that's a, so, so that one's pretty easy because you're, you know, the waves are coming and then subsiding. Remember, it's not like they're running it like the wave pool, like you're going to catch a wave. And then what happens is that wave, you know, you, you flow down. There's also people in the water, lifeguards. There's oh. again, you, you should be a competent swimmer, but you don't have to be a great swimmer if that makes sense. Got it. No, that's, that's a good point. And I guess to the, uh, about the, the tours, I mean, my kid's not quite there yet. He's, he's coming on 12. I don't think he, at least mine wouldn't have the attention span for a tour. Like they, they, he would kind of have the attitude of he would be there for about 10 minutes. And then if, if it wasn't like interesting the whole way through, then he would be saying to me, can we leave or can we go somewhere else? And then, you know, in the middle of a tour, you don't really want to be doing that. So I don't um, disagree with that. I guess the only one I feel like would be entertaining enough would be that wild Africa trip. Yeah. But, and, and the water parks, uh, I actually, funny thing you, you mentioned the water parks, Damon. Uh, I talked to my son about not going to the water parks our next trip. And he gave me this look like, like I had slapped him. It, it was a, how dare you not take me <laughs> yeah, to the water we, park? We haven't done the water. We didn't do the water parks last time. Obviously we were at Thanksgiving. Uh, I think that we did them the time before that because my daughter actually went on whatever the new falls one is. Adventure right? falls. Yeah. Yes. And that was, that was enjoyable for her. But I think it, you know, the teenager age again, if the weather is good. Yeah. My kids love them as well. I could always get them to go if the weather's good. All right. Well, so, hopefully that helped out, uh, Dorothy. Uh, the next question we have was from Scott, and this is a good question. I think this comes up a lot. I'm curious how you guys respond to the quote, you're doing Disney again comments. We've been doing DVC for about five years now, and sometimes I find myself avoiding scenarios where people ask me about my vacation plans. So I think it's a good question. I, I definitely get it a lot. I know, for example, my, my boss said to me the last time I went, which was the second time last year, you're going to Disney again. And I said something to effect of, yeah, well, you know, my, my hotel room's already paid for and I have annual passes. So for me to go there for a week is just the cost of food and to get me there. So why not? And we, and, and you know, of course, you know, I just tell them we enjoy going there. Right. So <laughs> I, I, I don't really worry about it because in my mind, I feel like everybody has their thing, right? So everybody's got their thing. Disney's our thing. That's it. You know, that's that in my mind, that's, that's what it is. And I used to have these arguments with my sister about this because she was really into, uh, oh gosh, what was it? Uh, Chelsea, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, um, soccer team, football team, right? Uh, so, and she was like diehard fan of that. And I said, well, why are you, she would say, why are you so into Disney? I'll be like, well, why are you so into Chelsea? Like, what, what, why is that your thing? And I'm just like, everybody has their thing. You know, you're into that. I'm into this. I, I know. It's, and that's okay. We can all be into our own things. That's, that's just always how I've looked at it. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because I don't really have to deal with this at all. I don't think I've ever dealt with this per se. Most of the time, I mean, we're going with friends. Most of our friends from this area are DVC members as well, or go to Disney once or twice a year. Also, it's funny how you don't, well, again, how, how you don't know how many people go to Disney. Obviously, tons of people go to Disney, but it's interesting that most of the people that we're friendly with and that my kids are friendly with go to Disney. So it's not something that really comes up that often for us. And 
you know, I don't get asked that, Hey, I'm going on vacation. All right, cool. When are you going to be back? Like, <laughs> that's the question I get asked. I don't necessarily get asked where I'm going and, and I don't really run into those conversations, but most of the time, you know, we're DVC members. I think that answers a lot of that question for most people. Uh, what's that? Disney Vacation Club? And then they just kind of leave it alone because if you're DVC members, you, you've already bought in. That is the end of the discussion. So that's yeah. at least how I feel. Yeah. And, and where we are, like it, um, DVC members, I, I've actually ran into a couple. I actually have a, a, a coworker that uh, his family owns in DVC. Um, but when I explain it as we have a timeshare in Florida, that, that kind of tends to answer the question. Like, I don't necessarily say, yeah, we're going to Disney or, or I'll say, yeah, you know, we're, we're staying at the Polynesian and this is what we do. And I don't think I've ever had anybody say you're going to Disney again, because on the flip side, a lot of the, a lot of the people that I talk to, they're always going to Mexico or, um, Vegas or somewhere, somewhere like that. So, so, you know, for them to come and say, you know, why are you going to Disney again? I can just turn around and say, well, why are you going to Mexico again? And that usually stops that line of questioning right there because, you know, kind of to what Tom said, you know, everybody's got their thing. And I mean, yeah, I, I guess that's the way to, to turn it around is, you know, if, if people are asking you about, you know, why do you go to Disney is why do you do anything? Because it's fun. So, you know, I'm, I'm allowed to do what I want and, and kind of, I, I actually liked uh, one of the, the posts on the Facebook group. What it, it was something to the effect of, you know, when you start paying for my vacations, you can start commenting about where I'm going. <laughs> well, you know what I found? Have you seen that new Disney commercial? The one where, you know, the dad's with the daughter and he's kind of crying because she got old and, you know, like again, Disney did a good job at, you know, they're only young once. Have you seen that one? Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, I it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 that answers the, the question, right? I'm going to have a lot of time to take, you know, my kids, if they would like to come on vacation when they're 18 on a cruise or to Mexico or whatever the case may be. I mean, it's got to be about what they like. I, you know, I'm going to tangent here as per usual. I always have these discussions with people and especially people that necessarily go away without their kids often, right? And then that's their choice. It's not my decision. That's their decision. So that's fine. But again, I, I'm, all about, you know, my kids are going to be, you know, in this time frame once and would they, what would they rather do? And, you know, most kids would rather go to Disney at the end of the day. So I'm okay with that too, as, as part of that discussion, if it needed to be, I mean, I like Disney too, but I'm just saying, <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I don't even bring up the kid card cause I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, it's funny you say that, Trevor, because I had an I had a new coworker that just started with me, and I I don't typically go around telling people about about the podcast, not because I'm embarrassed by it. I'm just not like, hey, I do this podcast, you should check it out. I'm just I'm more self conscious. I don't really want people listening to my voice, to be totally honest. But <laughs> I don't know if you how you guys feel if you tell everybody, but I'm just a little more quiet about it. But anyway, I told her about it, and she goes. And she goes, Oh, what's it about? And I, I said, it's about, you know, Disney and, and, you know, Disney's timeshare. And she goes, Oh, so it's for kids. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not for mm. kids. I'm not <laughs> making a podcast for kids. What are you talking about? And, and I said, you know, the, the people always think that Disney's Tom for kids. Tom doesn't let me swear kids. though. So I guess maybe it is for kids. I don't know. What, what? I said, Tom doesn't let me swear though. So maybe it is for kids. It's, it's for, the, for the whole family. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. We're okay. Family friendly. Yeah. Uh, you can play this on your way to Disney and you don't have to, you know, censor anything. So although I think I did let a curse slip through a couple episodes ago. So see if you can find that. Wait, was it me? It was you. <laughs> <laughs> no. So well, hold on. That, that is not a curse word though. At no, the end it's, of the day. listen, for most, it is not. That's probably why I let it slip through. I think I was just tired and couldn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was generally, it was generally a, a donkey, right? Is that the one? That's, that that's right. That's right. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's no, an actual word. Listen. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, I, I told her, I was like, no, the real secret is that Disney's, you know, really is very much for adults in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, the food, the drinking, the, the, a lot yeah, of the, rides. I mean, as, as a foodie, where else are you going? Now, listen, so I've had the opportunity to go to Fancy Food in New York at the Javits Center, which is a, a press-only event for all the new food for the year for across the world. Phenomenal. I, I would never say that anything would surpass that because I ate so much chocolate and drank so many different types of 
sodas and meats and whatever that it was just unreal. It was, it was so bad that I'm, I'm walking down the aisle at the Javits Center with chocolate. And I'm like, I literally could not put another piece of chocolate in my mouth and then saw something I was like, I have to try that. And that's been the, the most foodie event. I've also been to a chocolate show that my sister was actually PRing in New York as well. But anyway, besides those things, which I don't do anymore since I don't live in that area, this is the best food thing that you can do in general for a foodie to get a whole bunch of different things at once. So it, it, it's very much a Venn diagram of variation in food, I guess, if, if you wanted to explain to people that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and that last thing that I went to the, the holiday food thing of a Bob, like I didn't even know that existed. And then when I got there, I was like, Oh my goodness. And, and I know, and I know for a fact that we're going, since we're going next time and our friends are coming with us again, like they were legitimately upset that they did not do it because they did not, have park hoppers and they didn't plan on an Epcot day. So I know that the, that their wife was mad. So I would say that they'll be there with us this next time as well. And that was fun. I enjoy that. that. That's something though that's expensive, but is fun that I, that the kids enjoyed as well. So I, go ahead, Trevor. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, hopefully that this helps um, Scott with, you know, kind of dealing with some of those conversations that may come up around Disney. Apparently. There's curse words you could use too. Yeah, you can just curse them out. Uh, yeah, there's there's hand gestures. I mean, there's a lot of things. <laughs> if you want to go the aggressive route and and not talk to that person again, there's lots of things you can say. <laughs> so I think this next one is the easiest, right? Yeah, I, th- I think so. Chris asked, "Why aren't there member lounges in each park?" I think we would all love them, but it's just not ever going to happen because it's just too expensive. Yeah, unfortunately, because the problem is, is they DVC pays to run those lounges, which means you know, every one of us pays our dues and a portion of that goes towards helping pay for the lounge. So were, were you guys a little upset when you saw they were giving away magnets there? Cause I think I was a little upset. Oh, they were giving away the DVC, the, the white DVC magnets. I saw they, that. They were. Yeah. I was a little, oh. not, not like, a, I guess upset's a bad word. I was a little jealous. Maybe that would be a bad, I was like, Oh man. Nah, Especially since mine fridge. got stolen off my car last, uh, last trip. <laughs> I, I don't know why you would put them anywhere other than your fridge. But Listen, I have one on my fridge, one on my car. That's the way I went. The, we have one on our fridge and one of our car. We put it on my wife's car, and I I told the story in the podcast. I said before we walked in the resort, we should really take that off the car and put it in the car so it doesn't get stolen. Next day, I go to the car and it's gone. So it blew we had off. Every... It got eaten by a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably what happened, right? <laughs> so, Obviously. Obviously, yeah, yes. but uh, but I I also think it's the lack of available space. I know that sounds weird, but Epcot was perfect because it just had this space that was being unused. I'm trying to even think in Magic Kingdom or an Animal Kingdom or any of these other places. Some of those got taken over by Club 33, uh, but you know, there's not there's not just like space lying around that they existing spaces. They'd have to build something in in some of these cases. So that's probably part of the reason why too. I think. Yeah, I think it's a money thing in general. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so this next one has Garrett future meetup idea. Tom rides Space Mountain. I think that's going to happen. And Tron. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he's riding Tron. Why not? You know, I mean, I just don't think so. Anything's possible. So, so Trevor, I would say that again, not that Tron is going to be the craziest ride ever to exist, but I mean, you're talking about rock and roller coaster, which he won't ride, but not really kind of strapped in. Well, I, I put it closer to Slinky Dog Dash, honestly. But do you really? I do. I it, rock and roller coaster has uh, it has loops and stuff, and Tron doesn't. It's it's just a it's a pretty fast coaster. I guess is the only difference. I yeah. I do believe it's faster than Test Track, so I think it will take. No, it is it. not. No, I th- it's not. No. I thought it was. Test Track it, will be the still be the fastest. It, it looks fast, but it th- they're doing a lot of uh, optical tricks that make it look like you're going faster than you are. And I just, I just read a piece on that. That's the only reason I know. I want to look this up. <laughs> you, you can. I just read a piece on it. So unless the piece was wrong, which I doubt it. So we, we won't wait for you though, because that yeah. was an easy one. So we'll skip to the next one since it's something I want to talk about anyway. It, you know, again, we've decided that the listener topics are now going to be a spot for us to all put in our own personal topics that we want to talk about. And I guess the lava doll whip was one of them, but I'm going to wait because I know Trevor wants to talk about that one. This is more about the rise of the resistance ride and the, the way they're doing the boarding groups. And I just saw a post and it made a lot of sense to me. And I guess what they were talking about is, you know, should there be limits on how many times you can go in a vacation? You know, I know that there's the limit of once per day and 
should there be a benefit for people that are staying on site at Disney? Because right as, right now, as it exists, you have the, the one time a day, I guess, limit, but you could in theory go every single day of your trip and try to get a boarding group. And you really don't have an extra benefit for staying on site at Disney. And I, I tended to agree with these things. I, you know, again, I didn't really think about it, but if someone was going every, let's say, you know, four or five years, and someone else goes all the time. I, listen, I, I understand how capitalism works. I understand how luck works. I understand how, you know, getting up and going every day and just the random draw works. But I, I don't think I'd be adverse to that. So, you know, maybe you can go once oh, every four days or once a week, you know, for at least the beginning, you know, first year of this ride and I also think that there should be some sort of benefit to having people that are staying on site versus people that are not. Now, that's a little bit harder because I'm trying to think about how you would actually kind of enforce that and still make it fair, but giving them a little bit of benefit of the doubt. I don't know how you could do that either. But yeah, I think those are really good points. Now, I guess to play a bit of devil's advocate here is if you if you suddenly gave a benefit for this to people that are staying on site, don't you think they would, that would introduce more ways for people to game the system? So as it stands right now, uh, there, there's no requirement to be on site, but you know, if they said that all of a sudden you would have a lot of local people that want to, you know, keep riding or go on the ride as much as possible. All of a sudden they're booking rooms so that they can take, multiple rides but, but and then why, that makes it harder for everyone else though. So I, I guess what I'm saying is it's so those people I still think are going to have the opportunity to, to ride, especially if you introduce the first thing, right? So if you put some limits around it so that if you're staying on site, you can't get up every day and go, I, I still think that they would be able to get on. You, you know what I mean? Like, again, I think that's the thing. So I'm trying to give some benefit to the people that are staying on site as well as keeping the limits. You know, not that they're, you know, one or the other. They, they both, I think, have to kind of come together to make it work. Right. I, I don't know. I just, I think about the people that are, that are going. And, and again, this is something that maybe they introduce until some of the, you know, hype dies down, but, you know, I don't know when that would be. I just think, that I, I think I would be upset, not that, you know, this happens to us, but if you're going to go to Disney, especially let's say you're coming from overseas, you're only going to see Disney World once every five years or, or so, that kind of stinks if you can't get on, right? And you're staying on site. I mean, you know, it's kind of rough, man. Yeah. For me, I, I've scheduled this. So Hollywood Studios is our second day. Because I figure if we somehow don't get on the second day, then we have the rest of the time to switch up our schedule. What if you don't get on at all? I mean, I'll be bummed. I'm not going to be like trip ruined, but like I'll be bummed out. I, I, I truly believe that I will get on it I, as long as I'm there at opening and, and get my app open and everything. I, I, I don't see there being a problem, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't disagree with limiting it. I think it's when you have something that's this popular. I, I was also reading an article about this too. That it's this popular and it's also, uh, the capacity of it, which I thought was part of the problem. Uh, they're actually saying is like 1800 per hour, which is a, about what a, you know, a popular roller coaster will do. So it's, it's actually, uh, for, for this kind if of it's attraction. Working. What's that? If it's working. Yeah. If it's working. Yeah. But even, even with some of the shutdowns, I was reading that it's still running at like between 15 and 1800 an hour, which is, is not bad. It's actually for, for this kind of attraction is pretty high. Uh, is what this article was talking about. I think it was in the Orange County Register. Uh, but, but yeah, to, to your point, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with limiting it on the front end because it's so popular and people are waiting for so long. I think what they really need to do is go back to extended park hours. I, I think what's, what's really been hurting lately because before some of the backup boarding groups weren't even getting sold out until 10 o'clock when, I mean, my, my sister was there a couple of weeks ago in February and she got to the park at 10 30 and right as she was getting there, the backup boarding groups went out. So they were still doing backup boarding groups all the way until, you know, pretty far out. Um, but now that they've changed the, the opening time, it seems like it's a lot harder to get a pass, which is kind of frustrating or a group, I should say. Uh, it seems like it's a, a lot more difficult to get. Uh, how about, how about this? All right. So I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a better, better idea then. How about once a week, once a week, let's say, let's say once a week that there's, Early magic hours just for on-site people, right? 
And so, you know, you kind have like what, two, three hours. No, let's just say that you, the park opens an hour earlier. So boarding, boarding groups once a week open to on-site people earlier. Kind of like what they do at Disneyland with the, the early morning magic hours where you have to be staying at one of the Disney hotels in order to utilize them. But this would be specific to Star Wars. But what if they sell out all the boarding groups then though? I mean, there's there's no way. Well, well, again, you know, they, they, they can decide how many boarding groups are available at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then what if they, and what if they did? Well, but then, then all these regular paying, I mean, the majority of people don't stay on property, right? So the majority but, of people then, that go but to- But there should be a benefit for staying on property. No, there right? should be. You're right. You're so right. if it's one day a week and that's the benefit, then that's yeah, like, I don't, know. I don't know. I like that. I'd actually even say two days, but that's, you know, maybe I'm being greedy at that point. Now, um, so back to you were saying before about, uh, you know, people who have traveled a long distance or don't normally get to go. Uh, coincidentally, I actually have a coworker that is down there this week and he came to me, uh, it was actually right, um, right after Christmas, he came and he asked me about Disney because he found out that I go down there a lot. And I'm, the, the problem was because it was, he was already within inside of the, uh, the 30 day window by the time he, he came and talked to me, he really didn't get a good chance to to get into a lot of these big ticket rides. So he he was looking at it and he thought that he was going to be able to go down there and just kind of get onto everything. And I explained to him about the boarding passes and everything. And he seemed really turned off by it. But I, I tried to help him as best I could set up for his trip. But what I'm curious of is is kind of like what you were saying, Damon, about how how does this look to somebody who doesn't necessarily get to go down there regularly? When he gets back, I, I do want to I do want to get a, a summary of how his trip went, but uh, I'm going to try and relay his perspective on it as best I can, because I think that would be some good insight for those that are not as hyper-focused on this as we are, I guess. Like we're, we're all talking about it from the standpoint of, you know, we'll, we'll be down there next month or in a year or whatever. And so we're, we're even if we don't get it this time, we're not as, as upset about it. But he's, he's in a case where like he's, he's taking his kids and he doesn't know if he'll ever even go back after that. So I'm, I'm wondering what his take is going to be on this when he actually goes down there and experiences it. Yeah, I, I totally get it. I, I, we're spoiled in the sense of that we get to go so often, right? But the majority of the Disney guests that are going are, are people that are not, are going once every, you know, 10 years or once ever. So I, I totally get it. It's, it's just, I, I don't know if there's any good solutions to this, right? I, I feel like no matter what they decide to do, it's unfair. I just to gave somebody. you a good solution. You're crazy. What's that? <laughs> I just gave you a good solution. You're I crazy. I know, but it's, but some people would be mad about that though. There's plenty of people well, that would be mad. One day a I week? Mean, what people are going to be mad at one day a week? I would think so. Yeah. Why? I don't know because people get mad about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I thought Wait, the can way people, they were, t- can people doing- be mad about the next thing we're going to talk about? I, well, that's impossible. I, I'm going to be mad about it. <laughs> are, you better not be <laughs> just one second guys. By the way, I just want to point out that I was sort of right. It's the fastest roller coaster that Disney has. So Tron is okay. Just throwing it out there. Still not fastest. as fast as test track, is, but yeah, yeah right. is it fast as test track? <laughs> it's, then, it's then you're wrong. Miles, it's five miles per hour less than, than which is a lot. Yes, but I'm just saying it's the fastest roller coaster that Disney has. Okay, <laughs> but what would you call? I, I understand that they don't call um test track a roller coaster, but what do you call it? Gosh, I don't know. What would you call it? A roller coaster. So you're wrong. All right, that's. I didn't call it a roller coaster. No, <laughs> it's not a roller coaster. It's a track. You know, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it's I don't know. All right, so talk about your Dole whips. All right, All right. okay, Lava Trevor, are you uh, Trevor? You're mad at Lava Dole whips? No, so I'm I'm mad about the fact that they're introducing a Lava Dole whip, and it's at Pineapple and I in the Polynesian. And the thing that makes me upset is that most likely by the time I get down there, it's not going to be there. So I'm not well, going to get a chance true. to experience. You can be it. mad about that. Yeah. So, so my, my point of anger is, you know, kind of like how people are, are upset about missing Rise of the Resistance. I'm upset about missing a Dole Whip with passion fruit and, and pop rocks. 
<laughs> I can understand that. I get too. it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I mean, it does look really good. It and does. And the thing is, is you're right. It, you know, it's a little different. Is it ever going to come back? What if it never comes back? That's, you know, that's a bummer. You know, I tried the Kakamora float at the, uh, at the Christmas party and it was so good. Like I, I loved it almost to the point that I was seriously debating going and buying another one, even though I was full at that point and I would, I know I would have regretted it. This is something that, you know, it, I, I understand Disney has to keep changing around the menu to keep it interesting, but I feel like they're changing it too fast. Oh, where it's like super limited time stuff that's there. Yeah, like that's the best part of it because it makes you want to go back and do different stuff. Like I said, this thanks this yeah this Thanksgiving sort of food thing that they did with the cookie trail. There was a cookie trail, and I didn't even really do the cookie trail when we were there, but I know darn well I'll be doing the cookie trail this time. Yeah, but but I think I feel like they need to have a bit of overlap. Like if they introduce something, keep it around long enough. You don't have to promote it, but at least keep it on the menu. No, go more. Well, okay. Sorry. Go more often, Trevor. Go more often. <laughs> well, let, let me Plan go get a trip around the lava dole whip. Otherwise, don't complain about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on, guys. I'm going to go get my wife and I'm going to bring her in the room and we're going to figure all this out right here. And you're going to tell her why we need to go back like next you, week. You know what you should do though? <laughs> so you should, there was a, there was a treat of some sort. I forget what it was in my, on my October trip that was, had been discontinued like a month previous and my one of one of the people in my party was bummed about it and i was like why don't you just go ask and see if they have the stuff to make it and they could just make it for you and he wouldn't ask and they made it for him so maybe maybe that'll mm. you know maybe they still have the stuff and they can make it mm. for you are they gonna have extra passion fruit and pop rocks i don't think so uh, i might just bring point. my own pop rocks if if it comes down to rocks. <laughs> yeah just bring your own passion fruit and pop rocks and you're good yeah yeah there you go so this what? next one's this next one's tom right this next one's you Tom, yeah, how to talk yeah, about this? Yeah. This is. You, do you guys not want to talk about this? I think it's amazing. I, I think it's. I, I don't think. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's kind of cool. But you would wreck it up anyway. So, and then what would it matter? Well, I'm sorry <laughs> that I would use a tumbler for drinking things out of. I, exactly. I, I, I don't know what I would be thinking there. Exactly. I, Maybe put pens in it or something. Like, that would be kind of cool. Marbles it could be a planter. Like marbles. there's a lot of things it could be. Just a planter. <laughs> You'd have a little succulent in there, you know. You know. You don't know. Well, what we're talking about is there's a new Spaceship Earth uh, tumbler that lights up, and the top of it looks like Spaceship Earth. It's got like a dome, and it lights up all the different colors that they light up Spaceship Earth. It's got the new logo on it, or the old. Well, I guess really it's the new old logo, the classic right? looking. Logo. Yeah. yeah, it's got like the classic logo. It spells out Epcot and spells out what all the words mean. It is super cool. I I, I know you can't see it because this is a a podcast and it's audio but google uh you know spaceship earth tumblr and you'll find it it's amazing put put a picture of it when the podcast releases that's i'll do that i'll do you know i'll I'll do that but um but yeah check it out i i I want one i that's all i know is i I need one so i I got nothing else on it really just besides that it's cool and it's pretty cool i mean it is pretty cool but I, i think about those things and i just go what am i doing with it when i come home and see, that's what, out of it. <laughs> no, no, like, see, the problem that I have with it is, is like, again, when we get these cups or, you know, unless it's an actual mug that can go through the dishwasher, no, no dice for me. It's got to be able to go through the dishwasher to have a place in the cabinet at this point. I hand wash all my mugs, but that's just me. That well, wait a second, though. You. you can take off the dome, so maybe it is dishwasher that, that, safe. I, I doubt that plastic does not look dishwasher safe. Well, t- I mean, Tervis tumblers are right. It, it looks like a Starbucks tumbler. Yeah, but then, but then, is <sighs> the logo going to come off? And the, like, because if, yeah. if the Epcot logo comes off, yeah, it could be in the inside though. It's probably on the inside wall, right? So, oh, like uh, a you're, like you're it, in between it. it. Yeah, yeah, in between the two walls there. I can't tell from the picture, but it does. It, it, is it a dual wall? It, it looks like it to me. I don't know. I wouldn't want to wash the top though. Yeah, the top. No, you, yeah. you keep the top. But, and you got, and you, and, but you have to wash it at some point. Well, well the yeah, straw comes it. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like know. that we're talking about dishwashing. That's a great <laughs> topic for the shows. Your dishwashing tips from Welcome Home. So, so we're almost an hour in and talked about one thing, one one of our little sections so far. If you can believe that, <laughs> we're only forty three minutes in. We're, we're good. We're good. Oh my goodness! How many sections are there? Oh my there's goodness gracious! Sections. There's a there's, lot of sections. Listen, some of these we can talk about fast because truthfully, I don't want to talk about ticket price increase because. 
I do I don't, because okay, well, I let, take let's that, talk about ticket price, price increase. <laughs> I, I mean, do we even have to talk about like what they are? Like, does everyone already know already? Like, or Tom, Tom, you know what? Mr. Fact, Tom has to talk about exactly what they are. So go ahead, Tom. You I, talk about I, it before no, I give my opinion. I don't really want to. I don't even want to talk about this. I just feel like people would be like, why don't you talk about the price increases? I like, I don't want to talk about it. It's, it's, you know, it's what, uh, whatever. It's, All it's right, what for, happens for, every so, year, sometimes twice a year. <laughs> so for, for Tom, uh, DVC annual pass goes up $20. Poc- Park Hopper add-on goes up five. Max Pass at Disneyland increases five dollars per, te- per day. And Tom Tom asks, "What do you think of these increases?" Yeah, I think the prices have to continue to go up, or there'd be too many people there, and that's just the way life works when there's not an unlimited number of entrants into any sort of event. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the one thing though that stings in this is that Max Pass increase because that's five dollars per day per person. Yeah. So uh, again, it, it still adheres to the same rule, right? Otherwise, mm-hmm. everyone would be getting max pass. Correct. It, it still stings a little bit. I mean, I would still pay for it at this point, but I do see your point, Damon. It it, it does need to happen because if they didn't, you would uh, you would just have people standing shoulder to shoulder, and that's not fun. I, I mean, I'm sure everyone would love to drive around in you know a Mercedes E Class, but. <laughs> I just, I see these, I see posts on Facebook all the time of people like, you know, post tickets I, I, from like the seventies and they're like, wouldn't that be great if that was still the prices? Like, no, it would not be great. It would be awful. <laughs> well, it would be, it would be like ride of the resistance. You'd, you'd have to have a random shot, right? So think about oh, that. God. That's really what yeah. you're talking about. If you decrease the prices or, or did not increase them so much that so many more people wanted to go. And then what ended up happening was, is that. They didn't have enough tickets, parks were at capacity. You'd be ride of resistancing into parks. And could you imagine how people would be mad then? Oh, yeah. yeah. That well, would be that like would the be Hunger productive. Games, but backwards. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that would be crazy if that was the way it was, right? And I, I listen, I get it. It's expensive to go. It is. It's, it costs a lot of money, especially for bigger families. It costs a lot of money. I get it. Like, it costs in, a lot of money these... to go skiing in Colorado, too. Yeah. I mean, this is, and then you want to go to Vail, like you, you know, skiing's expensive too. I sometimes I feel like people act like the prices of nothing ever go up, right? <laughs> like, yeah, all, all, every vacation stays the same all the time. Plane tickets are the same as they were twenty years ago. You know, it's like okay. <laughs> did we get our price increase discussion in, or do we have to talk about more? I think, I think we did. So we I think we cruise did. through those last ones. All right. How how many people are going to have mad at us for this take? <laughs> I don't think so. I think we've talked about this. I thought we talked about this last year and I thought we all said the exact same thing. So yeah, pretty yeah. much. And, and that speaks to this is predictable. So I don't know why everyone's shocked. <laughs> well, it's like all the people, you know, this is President's Day weekend. We're talking about this, right? All these people are posting on Facebook today on the Facebook group. Like, that. oh, it's yeah. so busy. Really? It's a holiday weekend. Everyone, a lot of people are off next week. A lot of and kids are off next yeah, week. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Like my kids are off Monday and Tuesday. You know, yeah. we, 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 we joked. I said, oh yeah, you know, we should have actually gone somewhere. You know, if my, and, you know, shoulder didn't hurt and we actually had money, that would have been great, right? Like, <laughs> and my kid got five days off this, this weekend. It's it crazy. This week? Well, yeah, he got uh, Thursday, Friday, and then he gets Monday off. Nice. Yeah, see, I mean, that's what I don't understand though is that people are surprised by this every year that the parks are super busy on a holiday weekend. Anytime there's a holiday weekend, it's going to be busy, period. That's the way it is. It's always going to be busy. It's just, you know, whenever you have people off of work or off of school, it's going to be busy. That's just reality. But, but Tom, no, nobody else would think to go to Disney this weekend. <laughs> no one. But, no. But, here, but here's the thing. <laughs> Disney's always busy. So yeah, yeah. It, that's just life now. So deal with it. And that's it, right? Yeah. There are less busy times and there are more busy times. Holidays is very busy. Other you know, but again, less busy. this goes right back to that discussion about pricing then at the end of the day, right? Like if, I mean, it's, it's pretty much always busy now. Let, let's be honest, right? It's not like it was 10 years ago where you could go in the summer. Gosh, I remember going in August and like it really wasn't busy. It's never going to be like that again. It's just the way it is. It's that's life now. Disney's busy. Well, and it's kind that's of what that. they were trying to accomplish with the date-based pricing, right? It's spreading the crowds out through the year. Yeah. That's what they were trying to do. They're incentivizing people to go during slower times and de-incentivizing people from going during busy times. And it's worked wonder- It's worked perfectly. Now it's just, it's just consistently busy throughout the year. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I'm okay with that. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, 
I could be one of those, the good old days people, but there's no point. Mm-hmm. I do remember though going in August and gosh, it was hot, but there really was nobody there, especially when we lived up north where all the kids in the south were already in school. That was like the perfect time to go. You'd hit up August. It would be the end ish of August because that's when everyone from the south was in school and it was not that busy. It, it, it's still busy now at that time. Yeah. You know, th- those, those days are over. The same for us. We, uh, we did our honeymoon in September. Uh, what was that 17 years ago? And same thing. It wasn't very busy. We just, and you're right. It, uh, I, I don't kid myself to believe that at any point I'm going to walk in there and find the crowd levels like they were 20 years ago. That it's just not reasonable. Well, no, because the parks are going to keep growing and they're going to keep attracting more people. They're going to keep growing in attendance. That's just how yeah. things happen until, you know? until Disney stops feeding money into it. Well, I also <laughs> like people too that are like, oh, we'll just add a fifth park. It's like, oh, you don't think the ticket prices will go up astronomically when they add another park? Like, they'll just, they'll just add a fifth park and they'll keep the prices the same, right? <laughs> it's, it's like a goldfish. If you continue to feed it, it will continue to eat. Yep. It doesn't matter how big Disney is, it will continue to have people there. You're never going to build something big enough that you're going to be like, oh, okay. And then that's not beneficial because think about the amount of people it takes to run things. There's, you know, there's, accountants that are like, okay, well, it has to be this packed to be profitable. Yep. So if it's less packed, it's not profitable. If it's not profitable, you're not going to get new rides. So you want the prices to stay the same, then everything's going to stay the same. And that's probably not even the case anyway. But, you know, things are going to stay more the same. So then you'd be like, well, I'm going to Disney and gosh, there's no new rides. There's nothing planned for the future. But yeah, but the prices didn't go up. Like you can't have it both ways. Yeah. You really can't. And listen, it all sounds good. I mean, we all want it to be cheaper. We all don't want to spend the money. No, on it, but- no what really what it is, is we all want it to be cheaper. And this is not me. I'm speaking for the people that complain. Yeah. They want it to be cheaper for just them. That's really <laughs> that's what they want. That's true. Yes, mm-hmm. that's correct. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw somebody in one of the groups today post a comment that said, uh, that it's, you know, cause everybody, whenever these price changes happen, always go like over the top with it. And they're like, now it's so that anybody that doesn't make a hundred thousand plus a year can't, you know, can't go to Disney. It's like, no, that's just not true. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, this- I, I, I can factually say that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it, it's just, you know, it, it, I understand people get upset when prices go up. It, it's, I understand why people are upset about it, but it, it for, especially for DVC members, the price increase was not that bad. It was kind of okay. I mean, compared to some of the other price increases, Disneyland got it the worst. So if you really mm-hmm. want to complain, be a Disneyland person, complain about the, I mean, they got some really massive increases. So, you know, uh, I, I know people that are, uh, I have friends that live there. They don't care. <laughs> like yeah, that's it, true. It, it's it, it's funny that like the price increases they're just like uh oh, whatever you know the, the it, it's funny like like the the locals take on it is very different from the other people that get upset about yeah. these things it's true that's yeah. very true all right well this next topic are you guys are we good with the price increase conversation now yep you yeah, were good yep all right. Well, we'll have the same discussion in another six months or so. Let's mark it on the calendar uh, when they raise prices again. Is it July or August is the next one? Yeah, probably, probably August. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, they usually like to do it around that. If they do a second one, you know, they might not. Who knows? So uh, I, I, this is actually kind of old news, but I saw some people discussing this on Facebook and being very confused by it. So I wanted to bring it up here because I, I, I think it's, a, a, you know, good information for people to have. I, I want to be informative on the show and I think this is good information. Do you guys know about this? I don't care about it, but I'll, I'll listen, I guess. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, uh, there's I call been a for everything. What's that? I call for everything. <laughs> See, yeah. So you wouldn't know about that, but there's been a lot of, I don't want to call it hand wringing, but a lot of people upset that, you know, the variety of Disney websites all use the same login information. Yeah. So, which I like as a convenience, but if your information gets stolen, now somebody has a lot of access to all your Disney stuff. Uh, so DVC recently implemented a account login notification where they send you an email when there's a new login. Yeah, you've gotten these from other companies before where the, you know, if there's a, if there's a new login into your account, it sends you an email and say, Hey, if this wasn't you, change your password. But I've seen a bunch of people thinking that this is like a scam or, you know, spam of some sort or phishing, uh, and, and trying to, you know, people trying to take over your account. It's a legitimate thing. They announced it on the DVC uh, website. I think this is great. I think this is a great piece of security. Yeah. I mean, secure, listen, at the end of the day, you know, 
both Trevor and myself are in that field and, and security is becoming more prevalent in terms of trying to protect your identity and things like that. And it definitely does add time to what you're doing. There's no doubt about that. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think at the end of the day, it has to happen. You know, you have to have two factor authentication. You have to have these things to help people because everything has been so difficult. Now I'm going to tell you that again, you know, even being in that sort of field, I had one two weeks ago that, that I truly, truly was like, Oh wow. Okay. And like, I was like, hmm, I don't really remember doing that, but that seems so legitimate. Seems like really you have most of my information. And, and then I was like, Oh, you know what? Let me go and just look one more time. And I was like, no, that's actually not legit. And again, it was on something that was not a two factor authentication or an account log. You know, it was just, it was interesting that it's gotten so complex. That a targeted even, phishing attack, right? Yeah. Even something again that I'm very aware of pushed me to, you know, a limit for myself to really have to dig deep, you know, and, and Trevor, as you know, it was funny, it was on my phone. So I was having more of a difficult time really pulling up the actual, you know, back end information. So I just let it sit until I could get home. And then once I got home, I really took a look at all of it. And I was like, no, you know, but it was, it, was it had a lot more information than I, I really thought possible to be honest with you. Yeah. So I, I was surprised. I think these things are good. This is what I would say. I think these things are good and they may add time to some things you need to do for DVC and Disney, but all beneficial at the end of the day. Yeah. And I'll just reinforce what Damon is saying is, you know, I being in it for, for years, the, the change over these last couple of years has been so drastic around security that um, kind of to Damon's point, even for those of us that live and breathe it every day, it still makes you question yourself. And, and Disney has to do something about it because if you think about it, Disney's a fairly large corporation. All of us, you know, we, we deal with it on a regular basis. Think of how many thousands of people have information in there. And if it ever did get compromised, that's pretty huge. Not, not just for your Disney vacation, but it it could mean a lot of your personal information is given up as well. So the fact that they are implementing this, yeah, it takes you an extra few seconds to log in. And, and in my daily routine, I, I have to do two factor authentication, probably 30 or 40 times a day as part of my job. So it is just become a thing now it's, it's no longer, I no longer look at it as a nuisance. I just look at it as a requirement, but I I get for, you know, those that aren't used to it or those that see it as, you know, that this is a new thing. Why is it? Why did they change it? Honestly, I mean, this is a good step for Disney, but um, this isn't even proper two factor authentication. So, you know, for, yeah, I was going to say, it's not even really two factor. It's just an email saying, Hey, did you log in? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so it's, it's not even actually authenticating you. It's just letting you know. So, um, the only thing I would say to, to those listening is, you know, at, at the end of the day, your data and your privacy is your most valuable thing. And, and again, this doesn't apply just to Disney. This is in general. And, and I'll just reiterate that as, you know, as an IT guy, you know, if Disney is letting you know that people are logging in and you see, and you know that it wasn't you, like if you know it's you, you can ignore it and go on with your day. If you know it wasn't you, this should definitely be the prompt to, like Damon did, go and dig deeper, go and figure out how this is happening or if, if your account has been compromised or if something else got compromised because you don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Like, like I said, I have to deal with it as part of my job and it sucks. It, it sucks for, for the IT people that have to deal with it. It sucks for the end user. It sucks for the companies. So unfortunately the best way to protect ourselves is to implement these things and you have to play the game. And I, I wish I could say there was an easier way to do it, but there isn't. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it's it's definitely a good step in the right direction, and I, I think this is probably the first step towards them doing real two factor authentication. I, I think that will happen in the future. So, oh, guaranteed. It, yeah, it, I, it, I would think so. Yeah. Just considering that they're having this, you know, one account across, you know, ESPN, uh, Disney Plus, the more things that Disney, you know, and the DVC, just the regular Disney website, all of those are the same login information. So, having two factor factor authentication would be really helpful. I think so. Uh, so yeah, there's our PSA for the show. Let's yeah. get a PSA. Look at that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully my boss will be happy with me for reiterating the security thing because it's, like I said, it's a big thing right now. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's read our ad and then we'll get into, uh, Minnie Mickey's Runaway Railway. DVC Resale Market is the leader in the DVC resale industry with 11 former Disney Vacation Club guides and two former Disney Vacation Club quality assurance managers. If you're thinking about buying DVC, Browse the largest selection of DVC resale listings anywhere with DVC experts on hand seven days a week to answer your questions. If you're thinking of selling, turn to the friendly professionals at DVC Resale Market, where over 98% of listings sell within 30 days and nearly 3,000 contracts sold in 2018 alone. Go to DVCResaleMarket.com or call 1-844-DVC-PROS, that's 382-7767, and let them know that Welcome Home sent you. They uh, they love to know that you guys are are talking to us, and and uh, yeah, the the guys over there are super super excited to hear that uh, you guys listen to the podcast. Again, that's DVCResaleMarket.com or call 1-844-DVC-PROS. Great. They, we we love having them as a sponsor. They are just the best to us, and and we're we're thrilled that uh, they continue to be a sponsor of the show. We we uh, really see them as a great partner. So, so go talk to them. Support the people that support us. Right. Yeah. Even if you're not planning to buy, just you know, you can, you can ask them questions. They would. I'm sure they would. You know, if you're thinking about it and you're not sure, they can help you make those decisions too. <laughs> You can send some emails to Derek, ask him questions about life. You know, you don't have to ask yeah, him about DVC. I, I'm, I'm kidding. Don't I, do that. I, well, yeah, I, he, he'll, he'll probably be like, why am I getting, <laughs> why am I getting Don't, don't email Derek, Derek yeah. random questions that aren't DVC related. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, should we talk about Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Rail- Railway? Because we're coming up on opening here and we speculated on the last episode what they were going to do with opening. And I, I think we were, I think we were all wrong pretty much. Or I think I might have said, I, I'm not going to give myself credit because i don't really remember I'm not, what I, said. I don't give tom credit we can't give <laughs> but, but what they're doing is fast pass fast pass and standby they're doing the traditional method we're not doing a virtual queue we're actually gonna have a fast pass so and, and fast passes are open now so go get them i mean go and get them yeah and and it actually balances out the uh the tier one fast passes at hollywood studios again finally which, yeah um I, i'm glad that they finally stopped with the silliness that they had there for God, what was that? Like eight months that they had the fast pass. Like you couldn't fast pass anything, but, uh, or no, it was, you, everything was on tier one. Yeah. Everything was yeah. essentially tier one, except for shows and star tours. Oh yeah, exactly. Everything, everything was on tier one, except for shows and star tours. So, I mean, yeah. I, I think this is good. I, I yeah. <laughs> Rock and roller coaster is a fave. So anything they can do to free that up. Is a win. Well, yeah. Now it's great that you can do one of these rides and then do pretty much everything else at the park. Yeah. Which is, which is great. Did you guys see the sign that, the, that, uh, cool. that they put uh, out there? Cause I am yeah, it's like, pretty cool. It's did, you see, cool. Wait, did you see the video about the making of that sign? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. That was, that was really cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was really neat how they mapped that out. But, uh, I, it's funny. I, I, somebody said, Oh, it's so out of place on the theater. I'm like, a neon sign is out of place on a theater. Like, do they remember the theater? Like, when the hat was up? <laughs> I, I think I was like, that, that's gotta be somebody under like 20 that's saying that. Cause like, you know, it's but, a theater. It's, it's, of course it would have a cool neon sign on it. It fits in perfectly. Yeah. I, I guess the thinking is, is like, like the, the old theater signs wasn't, it wasn't a neon sign. It was the, uh, the marquee with the letter, like the yeah. letters that you can take in and out. But usually above that, there is the, the neon sign for the, the theater itself, right? Yes. Yeah. This was just, you, you wouldn't be changing neon signs per movie. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But this movie's never going to change. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, not for a while. I mean, that's quite a complex neon sign. My first thought was, what if, you know, cause neon signs go out sometimes, like part of it goes out. I'm like, that's going to be a pain to fix. Cause that thing is complex. That there's a lot involved with that sign. Do you believe that's actually a real neon sign? 
I, I think in the behind the scenes, it, they it showed, is. Yeah, it's yeah, legit. They were making the neon. So we, there's a, Trevor, there's a video online that shows them actually using neon to make the sign. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Interesting. I, I figured they would have gone the LED route because you, no. you can get pretty close with LED, but I guess, yeah, neon's still neon. Well, some of it, I think some of it might be some LED because I, I think there's like some blinking lights and, and stuff that's yeah. also part of it. But, but there's, you know, most of it I think is neon because even you have like Mickey and Minnie like waving and it's, you know, the neon where it's like in two different places. So it's like mm-hmm. kind of animated. You know what I mean? Like the arm it has one lit up spot and then one dark spot and it moves in between those yeah, the, two. The old way they had to do animation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it, it's super cool. I, I am very much digging the sign. I, I think it's going to be really neat at night, of course, when it's lit up. Uh, it's not lit up right now, by the way. So if you go to, if you go to Hollywood Studios now, it's not going to be lit up until the ride opens, which, you know, makes sense because you don't want people walking up and be like, Oh, I'm going to go ride this ride and it's not even open yet. Uh, but it, you know, it, it, I think it looks really cool. I, I'm, I'm, it makes me more excited for the ride just, just because of that marquee, it's just very neat and it's a very cool sign and it's, it's just, it's, uh, it makes you, it makes you want to come to the ride, right? So I'll, I'll just go and take a picture of the sign. I love that kind of stuff at Disney. I love when they have super unique stuff like that. Yeah. I think it kind of speaks to the fact that, you, you know, pe- people comment on when Disney tries new things, they say, Oh, you know what? Why, why are they doing, uh, you know, rides similar to what Universal is doing or, or embracing a certain new type of technology. But I, I think this shows that, you know, like you said, Disney, Disney, not Disney isn't afraid to do something for the sake of it being aesthetically right and not taking the shortcut because, you know, like I said, in my head, it, it was like, well, they could do all this with LEDs, but Disney said, no, 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 we want this to be authentic. So they went down the route of, you know, doing proper, proper, um, neon lights, which, I think this is why we all like Disney as much as we do. <laughs> yeah, it's the details, right? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 kind of goes back to what I was talking about before, where pe- there's I feel like people have a misconception that Disney's just for kids. It is for kids on the surface, but that kind of detail a kid's not going to care about, right? Like a a kid's not going to be like, oh, look, they did neon instead of LED. Like you know, it's those kinds of details that that adults really appreciate or even just you know walking through pandora or just a little the little tiny details and things are the things i appreciate about disney parks all the time when i walk around them uh you know especially like animal kingdom like some of the details they have there just walking through some of the areas and and the little things the little things you find all the time are amazing and that's the kind of stuff i feel like people appreciate and that's why you keep going back to disney because it's not like your regular theme park that you go to where it's just like hey here's a roller coaster and there's some stairs that go up to it like that are painted red enjoy you know like that's not how things are at disney and you got to appreciate that so you, you know you're right you know as uh I'm the one who cares about those details, but by, or because I care about them, I'm going to make sure my kid cares about them. So yeah. my kid will notice those details because I point them out to him, but, that, <laughs> <laughs> but that's also, I, I think that's how this continues on and how, you know, how Disney has managed to traverse generations because you know, we all had parents that, or I, I should say we all, I mean, for me, you know, my, my parents went to Disney and, and they got me obsessed with Disney and that's how a lot of people have like, like it, it has spanned generations because you do have adults going there and, and they appreciate things and they relay that to their kids and then their kids grow up and learn to appreciate it. Even if, even if they don't in the moment and that's what keeps Disney going, I guess. <laughs> So no, you're totally right. Yeah. yeah. Reasons to do it right. <laughs> I, I have to say I am, uh, I'm, I'm doing my fast passes on Tuesday and this is going to be a priority for me. Mickey and Minnie's is going to be a priority for me. I do want to get a fast pass for that. Um, it's one of the few things at Hollywood studios that I can actually take my daughter on with me. Uh, cause there are, I mean, there are very few things we can actually go on, uh, as a toddler at, at Hollywood studios, whereas a lot of stuff at magic kingdom we can do Hollywood studios. It's essentially, uh, shows Toy Story. <laughs> What's that? Shows or nothing. Yeah, shows. <laughs> uh, Toy Story, uh, Mania. We can do 
And because even alien swirling saucers, that has a height requirement on it, which if you've been on it, you understand why it's like a whip ride. Yeah, so the, it's, those cars whip. They really do. They do. <laughs> they, they move a lot more than I thought they would when I went on it, but it's going to be basically be those two things. I mean, she can't really do anything else with us besides that. I mean, of course we can do the Disney junior show and the, uh, the, the Lightning McQueen one, which I'm not remembering right now, but outside of that, that's, that's pretty much all the kid can do at, at Hollywood studios. So I, I'm excited for this. I, I think it's going to be a big priority for us. We're definitely going to ride it. I'm going to try to ride it more than once when I'm there. That's the plan. So, wow, that's that's ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to make it happen. Well, here's the thing. So we have a broken up trip. So the first two days is just going to be my wife and I. Then my in laws are going to come, and we're going to go back to all those parks with them. So I'm probably going to try to do it twice with them. Just I mean, once with us, and then once with them. I'm also going to try to ride Rise of the Resistance twice too. So we're gonna we're gonna see how that works out. Um, against what Damon's saying about trying to limit it. But, <laughs> but although these are why we have to have rules. This is why. Well, listen, I, it's, it's going to you you propose four days. I'm going to go on Sunday and I'm going to go on Thursday. So there you go. <laughs> is that try acceptable, anyway. Damon? I, I think it's acceptable. Damon, is that acceptable I, under I your you plan or no? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. I think it should be once per week and that's it. Sorry. No, I understand. I, I more want to get my, my, my mother-in-law is a big Star Wars fan. So I, I want to get, want to make sure she gets on it more than anybody. So, um, I'm sure you, you're wanting to talk about this next topic, Damon, quite a bit. I know you were posted an excited post on the, on the uh, group about this. I have to look and see what this topic is now that you're discussing. <laughs> what did we lose you while we were talking about this? <laughs> he kind of lost me a little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Galactic Star Cruiser. Do you, do we have your attention now? Oh, you, you know, it, it's not, not even like there's anything to talk about. It opens. I book. That's it. End of story. There is no discussion. <laughs> I don't really care about what's going on. When it opens, I expect to get texts from people. Someone better post it on the page. Like, I want to know when it opens and I'm booking. I don't care when it is. I don't care what it costs. And I'm going. And that's it. End of story. And it's funny. Like, I, I think I got my wife on board. The, the kids are mad, but oh, I told them, I told nice. them, like, you're not going. Cause again, it's just too expensive. <laughs> and this is, this is unfortunate because I just said in the beginning of the podcast that I don't necessarily care for people that go on vacation without their kids, but this is just too yeah. expensive. I'm sorry. They're just <laughs> going to have to live with this. And, and again, I'm going to be honest with you. Teenagers will ruin this. Like teenagers will ruin this. <laughs> they will. You cannot take teenagers with you. They will ruin this experience if you want to like really dive deep into it. That's what I feel like. They'll be with their phones around. Oh, this is stupid. Like I'm not wearing this robe. You know, I'm, 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 <laughs> listen, I'm making up a lot of things that I just envision totally true happening. Yeah, are, not true. Are, are you like, trying it, to justify, you know, why you aren't going to bring your kids? Is you, you're telling you them? know? I, I just, I just think that they would. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I think they would ruin the experience. I, I think that they would be their regular teenage selves and just. Again, this is, this is not what this is about. This is different. This is, this is just going to be interesting, but I'm in. I'm in. I'm just, I'm just imagining now, like there being, there's a rumored scene where Kylo Ren's going to like attack the ship and, and people are going to have to do things. And now I'm just imagining a teenager running up and be like, quick selfie. And yeah. Like, you know, so, <laughs> quick selfie with Kylo. Got to post it on Instagram <laughs> or exactly. everything's falling down and they're just like, so whatever it, on their phone. <laughs> it is going to, it's going to be interesting. Like they're going to be no phones. Like what is this really going to be? How immersive is this really going to be? We're going to find out. And yet, so for those that don't know, part of the reason why we're talking about this is Disney announced that you'll be able to book a reservation later this year. Now, when later this year is, who knows what that means? Um, but sometime, let's say fourth quarter, let's say October, November, December, you'll be able to book it for next year. So I'm in two day, two night. Now I'm in. I, I know for me personally, I, I mean, my kid. He'll have a phone probably in the next year or two. He, he doesn't have a phone yet. I would take it away if I was going to let him yeah, but, come on that. But think about it like this. If I'm in that, right, and my kids are not with me, mm. I kind of have to have my phone. Well, that's that's true, right? Because you need to be able to be available in case they need something, right? So Yeah, yeah. I guess so. No, uh, no so, I'm saying if, if the kids are going to come with you, yeah, then take I the would, phone away. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so, what's the, so I will say, though, that the limit for two people – that would stop me from going since we have no pricing yet. So tonight it's going to be $6,000, $6,000 and below. I'm in. If, Are you saying if, total for two people or yep, total for, for two people. Okay. 
But if it's over six grand for two days, two nights be tough. for two people, I'm going to rethink it. Like, oh, maybe I won't say six. I'm going to say eight. Let's go eight just because I really <laughs> want to go. I'm going to wow. go eight. If it's over eight, I'm out. Like if they start charging like 10 grand for this, I'm out. But under eight, I'm in. Okay. We're going to have to hold you to that when we find out pricing. <laughs> now you can hold me to under eight because I've, I've actually, I have this money saved specifically for this. If you oh. can believe that already, like I'm, I'm first day in paying and being done. <laughs> There's nothing else. Like I'm in at that price point and I'm going Jesus. because my fear is as with all good things. Someone's going to hose it up. I want to be there as early as possible before somebody can hose it up and make it not as fun. I was going to say, you want to be there right when they open and they're still like Heck working yeah. at the kinks? Nope, because like- that's the best time to go. I'm going to okay. tell you, like with Harry Potter and all the lands, all the things that they don't do that they used to do because somebody hosed it up. Because there's stupid people that hose things up for other people. And I want to get there early. Because what what, what do you, like what's going to happen in the beginning that's not going to be as good? What? Someone's going to not... Do what? You know what I mean? Like someone's going to hit Kylo with a lightsaber and then it's, yeah. you know, Kylo's getting punched. And that face. would be so funny that why would I not want to be there through, <laughs> for that? You see what I'm saying? Like <laughs> only good can happen. We, we went to Bush Gardens and it was the first day of the Christmas thing that they do there with all the shows. And the one show was so bad because they were just like falling over each other. Like it, they didn't know what they were doing. Like somebody got kicked, somebody fell over and it was hysterical. Like, why would I want, like, why would I want to see it perform perfectly when I could see that? Like it, that was enjoyable. Like that's something we won't forget. So I'm okay. If Kylo Ren like falls off his wire and gets hit with a lightsaber, <laughs> like, and you know, knocks over a stormtrooper, like that would be awesome. That would be really funny to see. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm just thinking of all the different things now the guests are going to do. I'm just thinking someone's going to overindulge in the, uh, in the, uh, bar at the hotel and, you know, I think things. people are going to get like touchy. I think that's usually what the problem is. Like the Harry yeah. Potter ride that used to be awesome until people were touching dementors. Like, yeah, I could have reached out and probably touched one too, but I didn't because I'm a normal human being that understands laws and how things are supposed to be run in a society. Right. So, yeah, yeah. but th- that's what I think is going to happen. So yes, I do want to go there as early as possible. I-, I do think Disney's like used to this though, and they'll put some distance between you and the actors in some way, shape or form, or, you know, they'll have they hidden will handlers until, of some sort, you know, they will until somebody tackles Kylo Ren and then like all bets are <laughs> off and then they're going to be behind like, you know, um, you know, fences. fences. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, again, yeah. I want to be there before they're behind the fences. Yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, man. So anything else about the, about the Star Cruiser? No, I'm going to be reporting on it though. I, I'm, I'm assuming that yeah, I'm going to be the first one, the first one <laughs> out of us three to be there. Oh, well, probably. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, unless some, by some miracle, it lines up with our 2021 trip. Yeah, okay. we'll have to see, right? Who knows? We don't know when it's going to open. I mean, that's they're true. Good because progress it, on it. it. You know, the thing is, too, is you're right that this puts like a little bit of a. Well, see, what I would do, Trevor, since I'm closer, is that I would go just for this. Yeah, like I would go spend a night at like a hotel, do no park, and you know, even if I had annual pass, I would I would want to prep. Actually, I don't even know if I would go to the park. I'd stay home so I wouldn't get sick being at the Disney hotel the day before because I wouldn't want to get sick by, you know. Be careful, yeah. Yep, got to be careful. So I, I would just roll right from my house right there and then maybe stay like an hour away <laughs> out of the sick zone of Disney and then roll in and go right into my experience. See, that's the other thing. What happens if you get sick? Are you quarantined? <laughs> They have a court, they have a medical bay on the, uh, on the ship that they, yeah, I mean, at that price, people be mad. Oh, yeah. That's, I mean, it's going to happen. They're going to have to figure all this stuff out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially at that price point. Yeah. It's only two days. Like, yeah, that's, that's dangerous. There's going to be a very complicated, uh, set of like rules that they're going to have for all this and have to, have to figure all this out, I'm sure. Well, and, and Tom, the other thing is I do agree with you with this. This alcohol overindulgence. I'm, I'm hoping that there's. I hope that's some sort of limit. Well. Yeah. yeah, that would a limit would be good or a, a brig. Star Wars. Brig. Maybe they do that. Maybe they'll just throw you in, in Star Wars jail. Like, <laughs> Star Wars jail. But they see, have us jail for three thousand dollars a night. Oh, I was going to say to your point though, for paying that kind of price, someone's going to be mad if you be like, you can only have two drinks. They're going to be like, I paid four grand for this. I want to have as many drinks as I want, and then you ruin know? the experience for everybody else. 
Yeah. And then that's what's going to happen. And then there's going to be and fences around Kylo Ren. That's uh, what's going to happen. Unless they make it part of it. going to be a like the Pope. is going to be. <laughs> now he's going to be like Blaine. What was it? D- D- David Blaine? Well, which was the one that was in the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's David in the glass Blaine. box. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, unless they make it part of the contract that you only get so many drink tickets. Like I could see oh, like doing tell you like upfront, you yeah. can only drink so much. Eh, Dr- yeah. Drink tickets or, or drink credits. Yeah. Drink credits. credits. Yeah. Yes. That would be, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. It, it is. Listen, this is going to be something that is very, it's going to be very interesting to see how it's handled. It really will be. And, and I'm kind of excited for that to see everything that goes into the planning of this. Depending on the price point. Listen, we really don't know the price point. What if it's a thousand dollars a night? And like, you know, again, we're, you know, everyone wants the book because it's, it's cheap and cheap enough that everyone wants to go. And that's that. Like, you know, that's again, it's got to be at a price point that's manageable, but still stops everyone in the world from wanting to go, unfortunately. Well, cause even at, even at a higher price, even if you're talking two thousand a night per person or something like that, people are, even if people, can't afford that they'll save up for that if you're a hardcore star wars fan this is going to be the ultimate experience right you just have to do we don't know yeah you hope so you hope so yeah uh, Yeah, see the other question that i'm I'm having is is that and this is the big question that i've I've been kind of pondering over and again i keep asking my wife and she keeps telling me to shut up she's like it doesn't matter yet and you can talk about it for the next year she's like when is it opening i go 2020 i don't want to hear about this for a year and a half but I keep asking, how are you going to get in and out of the park? Like, are we going to go to the park as part yeah. of this? Yeah. Okay, well, so what are they doing? Closing down the park or opening it up early? When am I going? Do I have to go with all the regular people? Like, See, I don't want to go with the regular people. <laughs> I want to go by myself. Like, I want the park to be closed to me. I, I well, don't not know to me personally, to but to group. Well, right? I, and this, this is the question I keep asking. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know you definitely will be part of the going into the park. Yes. And there you will have your own entrance into the park. Yeah, I don't care. There should be no one else in the park. Well, I mean, yeah. that could be the case. There was, there was a lot of talk that there was going to be, uh, like a dinner type, uh, a dinner, I don't want to say dinner party. What am I thinking of here? There was supposed to be an, there was an announced restaurant that was like a club dinner place. And now apparently that's being built. It got kind of scrapped and apparently they're going to have that for the star cruiser, but maybe that's how you end up in there. You go to dinner there and then the activities happen after the park closes or something. I don't know. Park better be closing damn early for me. <laughs> <laughs> Five o'clock park closing. Cause <laughs> or you're napping through Jedi training so you can go. Oh to my it. goodness. That'd be horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. thing. Like I'm going to have to like, is there like a cosmic star cruiser Red Bull or something? Yeah, Cause like Red Bull on the star cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm going to need something. I, I mean, they should make a deal with Red Bull for Galaxy's Edge Red Bull. <laughs> Two nights a night. Like, are you going to want to sleep? Like, is there going to be stuff going on at all night? Like, is there going to be, like, lockdowns like they would on a regular ship? Like, there's a lot to think about here. Oh, man. If they woke you up in the middle of the night, that would be kind of amazing. And also would make people super mad. But <laughs> but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, are you going to be able to roam the ship at night? And will there be stuff going on? Like, is it a 24-hour thing? That's a good question because they can't just like keep you in your room. Like I've, well, yeah. I've, when I've stayed in like a regular hotel, wandered down to the lobby at like midnight to get a snack or something. Are you yeah. going to be able to do that in this hotel? I don't know. And that, there will be roaming droids. Yeah. That would be amazing see, to see, just have like a, like a astromech droid just, you know, until, cruising until somebody tackles it. It's all about the tackling Trevor. Like yeah, someone's going to tackle it and then they're going to ruin it for everybody. But no, I'm just talking about, you know, like in the middle of the night, you know, like, like Tom said, you know, you get up and you're going looking for a snack and, you know, just a droid just comes rolling down the hallway out of nowhere <laughs> until that would somebody be amazing. steps on it because yeah. they're drunk from eight yeah, galactic so, because they, they've traded real money for galactic uh, drink tickets and now they got eight of them instead of three. Yeah. Well, that's, I don't know. I don't know if you guys finished the Imagineering series, but they were showing at one point this free roaming robot that they built. That's like literally just, you know, AI and it just, it kind of goes around and, and does its own thing. And they were talking about how, as it's roaming around the park, the kids just like climb on it. Yeah. Like literally the kids just climb on the thing and like ride it basically as it goes around. So this is the problem that you have, right? Yes, it is. You see something with wheels. The first instinct is I want to sit on it and have it wheel me around. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this has been a great conversation about this hotel. I, I can't wait to find out the answers to all these questions. Yeah, the, the, this whole thing is just nuts. Like it's so unprecedented. And yeah, like you said, Damon, there's so many, so many questions about how are they going to handle all the, 
all the unknown factors of this. <laughs> and that's what's, that's what's enjoyable. So, so what is the price point? Like, what, what do you feel like is the, that's too much price point? I'm, I'm kind of with you that eight would be too high. Six would be pushing it for me, but even six, I could, or three people that would be for three for okay. like, cause it, it would, I, I could not tell my son he's not coming. Like, yeah, that I would, have three, so I can kind of do that. Yeah. <laughs> I could be like, yo, you three, you're going to be, all right. So let's think about it like this kids. I will buy you one thing you really, really want. And um, you let daddy do this. $400 <laughs> and I'll still save a ton of money. <laughs> buy you a new phone if you just let yeah, exactly <laughs> everyone gets a new phone to stay home uh okay <laughs> they'd probably be like dude this is so much better i don't have to deal with star wars people like this is great i got a new phone that's another thing there's, a, there's gonna be some interesting star wars fans on that thing <laughs> yeah have you ever been to like have you ever listen i love renaissance festivals i really do but have you ever been to a renaissance festival where like you're just kind of renaissanced out and that other person who's not an actor there is not. And they're kind of like, you know? Yeah. There's going to be, you, I, I think I know what you, like, there's going to be some people that there's are going to be somebody that are taking um, a little Your lightsaber would never have been that color. Yep. This is during yeah. the Clone Wars and they didn't exist until. <laughs> yeah. The, and you're going to be like, all right, dude, I understand. Relax. This, this is Comic-Con you're talking about. It, it, and I've gone the, to Comic-Con. Yeah. Like I've I, gone to Comic-Con, you know, for gosh, for a long time. And, but that, the thing with Comic Con is, is like, it's not that expensive and it's not about just one thing. So people are a little bit more forgiving. Like, uh, oh, okay. You don't know about this. Well, that's because you're into that. Well, this is just straight up Star Wars. Like I might have to study. I might have to study before. Yeah. You know, I, I, Cause that's the sort of person I am. I think it depends on the room you wander into at Comic Con or at least the ones I've been to is, yeah, sometimes you do get that. Wait, like, have you been to the big ones or not? Uh, no, just the ones in Canada. Uh, okay. The, the couple that I've been to is, yeah, occasionally. So no, no San Diego or New York. No, no, no. Um, okay. But the, Those this are the big is, boys. Yeah. <laughs> but, but this is like, you still have distinct groups that you'll wander into. And yeah, you say the wrong thing and you get that. Like everybody stops and looks at you kind of reaction. Like, why did you say that? You should know better. And yeah, th this is an entire pseudo cruise ship potentially full of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking to myself, like, can I wander at one o'clock in the morning onto like the bridge and like, they're going to be like flying the ship fakely and, and, <laughs> and, and awesome? I'm just like, how's it going captain? Like, you know, just, yeah. are they, are there always going to be actors, you know, ca actor cast members well, at, well, see, on, that's, on that's, ship yeah. at all times, you know, that's kind of what I'm wondering. I, I think for the price, like, I think there could be. The I think there should be for the price, right? I mean, you should – if you're going to be there for two days and two nights and going to pay that amount of money, I feel like you should kind of be able to do whatever you want. You should be able to now, wander see, whatever Tom, you want. Tom, now you see, <laughs> now you're making it bad for everybody. Meaning that, that you I just want, ruined like, it. Go, you, like, you, go wherever I want. Like, you, wander the ship when I feel like it. Yeah, Not, yeah. like, do whatever you want, like, punch a guy in the face. Like, I mean, you know. But you just was reinforced. A I had to. <laughs> yeah. You just reinforced what Damon was saying. <laughs> Tom already <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's talk let's talk about the, about the Star Wars a galaxy far away going away. Yeah, it's going far far away. Um <laughs> That's a terrible day. February 22nd. Yeah. Which So if you're, that's if in you're like listening to this you pro it's probably gone already. 6 days. Yeah. So that's the stage show they do in front of the theater. I'm kind of okay with this. I feel like it's a good thing that they're moving some of the Star Wars things away from the rest of the park. I, in a way, I, I think I feel like we kind of thought this was going to happen, right? Yeah. Once Star Wars yeah. opened, like they were going to start moving some stuff away, right? Yeah, I mean, I say I feel the same way about uh, the um, oh, I can't remember what it's called now, where you can meet Kylo and Chewie, the launch bay. Uh, launch bay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's it, it's the same thing as you know, the, those have kind of served their purpose, and honestly. The the stage show to me, it, it got to a point where I I saw it as yeah you know it stops people and gets their attention long enough but I'd seen it a couple of times so I was like eight million times yeah, yeah I don't care anymore so I would agree and I, I you know it's we always think that like everyone has some sort of interest in Star Wars there's people that just don't like Star Wars so you know contain it in one area that they just don't have to be let it be easier for them like mm -hmm. I've heard people complain about that I don't like Star Wars. Okay, so we're going to move it all out of your face now. You don't have to worry about it. You're you're totally right. I've seen so many people complain in some of the groups where it's like, 
that Hollywood Studios has been taken over by Star Wars, that it's all Star Wars and there's nothing but Star Wars. And so this, you're totally right. You put it in that little land and then you don't have to go in that land. You, you can stay away from that land. And maybe this means we'll start getting more of the Roman characters, you know, a lot more of those, those characters that were in that stage show will be now roaming around Galaxy's Edge even more. There were, there's some of them now, but you know, it's, it's not constant and there's not, you know, aliens walking around all the time. And plus that giant stage was kind of an eyesore. I I personally really like walking into Hollywood Studios and seeing that that really great view down the street and and seeing the theater and, and all its glory and all that. I, I, I like that view and I feel like that big stage kind of ruined it. But I don't know. Like I said, I think this is a good thing to move some of the stuff away from the rest of Hollywood Studios now that they have a whole land dedicated to Star Wars. I guess this means there's a potential for me to get a selfie with Boba Fett at some point. I, I mean, is that is it something you really need? You need that, right? I, I, I mean, why I wouldn't you? I think everybody it? needs that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Boba Fett is one of those characters I would stop and get a selfie with him and Chewie. I mean, rightfully yeah. so. I've had yeah. pictures with Chewie, but Boba Fett, I haven't been able to get close enough yet. Yeah, because they don't really do any. He doesn't wander around. No, and he was only really in that stage show, right? Yeah. So again, I have pictures. The parade before anything at Star Wars was really over. They used to have the Star Wars weekends, which yeah, I just wandered into one of those. We didn't even know it was a Star Wars weekend. And there was that parade. And dude, there was some awesome stuff that happened during those parades. Ah, nostalgia. The good old days. <laughs> well, I mean. I, when there was what... Star Wars and a Disney magician's hat in Hollywood oh, yeah, Studios. Yes. I, I guess I'm part of the minority that didn't really care for the hat, but. You're a jerk. That's all there is to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I know I'm in the minority. I know everybody there, loves. There's nothing else to even say about that. I have a, a Christmas jerk. ornament of that hat. So yeah, he, I do too. I, I listen, it, I Trevor. It, it really feels like sometimes that Tom is just not really a true Disney fan. I I would actually <laughs> disagree. I think the hat was an eyesore, and I think it blocked the park as it was originally designed. I think I'm more of a purist about this than anything, because I want to be able to see the park as it was designed. I want to walk in and see the theater right as I walk in, whereas the hat blocked the whole thing. So I'm just being a pure, I'm being a purist about it. Well, but the original design <laughs> also had the what about it? tower. You're not allowed to say you're going to bleep it out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the original design had the earful tower there too, and that's not that's a thing true. anymore. So, I do miss the Earful Tower. I, I miss that. I, I miss. Listen, I miss the Studio Backlot Tour. You miss Golden Go- Golden Girls, don't you? I do. I miss the Golden <laughs> Girls house. I do. That well, was exciting when when they showed the front of the house. I, I listen. I still miss. I'm, I I used to love the Backlot Tour in its original iteration, where you you know where you had the actual guides on there, you know doing the I'm, doing I'm the just, actual tour. That was yeah, the best. I love that. It was. I'm just trying to wonder, like how further how much further back that i go in my disneyness than you guys do to what i would have seen that you would have you like you guys did never did Twenty Thousand leagues under the sea or you did no i did yeah, i wrote I did. it when i was a kid yeah okay mm-hmm. i did yeah, it, it was my favorite ride river ever country is the kid. only thing i got I you guys it. on huh yeah i know i went to river country when i was a kid too apparently i don't no remember pictures. it yeah, you have no pictures it does definitely 100 percent does not count unless i see pictures or it never happened so well, listen i don't really believe that i went to river country i'm pretty sure my my dad's were remembering it incorrectly because i asked them for pictures i was like do you have pictures of me at river country maybe and, it was like the pool maybe it was the lagoon and they just and they thought that was river country i uh, listen i don't know but but my dad swears up and down and my mom does too that we went to river, river country but i honestly do not remember so well, it, okay, if we're going to play that game, then I've ridden the People Mover in the Skyway in Disneyland, and the Skyway goes uh, through Disneyland the doesn't count. You but, know that, trap. Well, no, 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 but <laughs> but the Skyway went through the Matterhorn, and you'll never, ever, ever see something never like that again. that again. Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably never get to do the People Mover again either, since it's yeah. just, you know, yeah, sitting they, there empty. They kind of ruined the track, but yeah, that's a whole really other... Broke it. What, what's, yeah. old, what's older than 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea that got, went away? <sighs> Uh, the flying saucers. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh man, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea was such a great ride. Let's it really wrong. was such a great ride. It took up so much space and like was terribly inefficient, but it was so great. It's still there in Disneyland. It's just Nemo now. I mean, yeah. you guys did Alien Encounters or now? Yep. Yeah, 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 that was there when I was. I, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. uh, I'm just, I'm looking down <laughs> well, the list now. What about? I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, Horizons. You could talk about Horizons. Um, 
See, yeah, I, I never got to Disney World when Horizons was there, so... I so, don't think I ever yeah. went on Horizons. Body well, what, Wars? I don't even, How about Body Wars? Body Wars? Yeah, I did Body Wars. Yeah. But wait, what, what's Horizons? I, I just don't even know what that's it was. That's where Space Sh- or Mission Space is. It, it was oh, a uh, Omnimover ride with... Uh, wait, like, at Epcot? Yeah. Yeah, at Epcot. Oh, then that's, that's not even old enough to make it, like... Worth it. Wait, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. That oh, yeah, was yeah. In, okay. oh, yeah. I've been on that, yeah. In Disney World, right? Disney World, yeah. I, I, I don't remember that. I have vague recollection of that ride and also uh, Snow White, but I, I don't... It's you know, It's been a long so, time, so obviously. Two, so, 20,000 Leagues was closed in 94, so that yeah. seems like it was pretty much... I'm looking at kind of this list of closed stuff. That seems like it was... I, I guess the the Star Jets was also there. That closed in 94. The Penny Arcade, obviously, that's 95. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I don't think there was anything that was a lot older than that. Do you guys remember the, uh, I think, was this an episode? The Plaza Swan Boats, that was 83, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's one that I never did. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. believe I did that either. Uh, do you guys, do you guys remember it was like, uh, Robin Williams was like a robot and like you stood in a, a circular room and like it was like a, it's kind of like some of the Epcot, uh, the, the, like this Canada film and where it's, uh, I can't remember the name of the technology, but where the, the videos all around you and there was the yeah. robot and he's got any, I'm trying to remember what it was called and I'm blanking on it, but I remember that from being a kid. What, what about the Davy Crockett Explorer canoes? No, no. They don't. They still have the canoes at uh, Disneyland. Yes, it, it, it's funny how you you guys are like talking about all these things that are gone. I'm like, I rode that in Disneyland. <laughs> Wait, so so hold on. So the the Mickey Mouse review that was a Fantasyland theater that was eighty nine. If you had wings, Delta Dream Flight. That oh yeah, closed in yeah. ninety eight. Okay, so that's I still. That. All right, so here here's the last one that I'm gonna bring. Uh, Mike Fink Keelboats. That was 2001, so that was still not that old. 2001. I that. Okay, so I think that the one that's the big one is is that Flight to the Moon, Mission to Mars. Mm. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, and, that, yeah, and that, Tom, was that one you got? That was where Alien Encounters was. I don't I don't think I ever went, no. I don't think I ever did that one. But it's still in Disneyland, or it was at Disneyland uh, as well, Mission right? to Mars got replaced by Captain EO in Disneyland. Okay. Yeah. And I've, I've done either. both of those. Gotcha. I don't. Re- I didn't do Captain EO back in the day, but I did it when it came back briefly. Okay, <laughs> uh, that was my childhood. I I loved all the Michael Jackson stuff back then. Yeah, Michael so, Jackson's going to save the universe with dancing and singing. I mean, what what can be totally. better? Totally. <laughs> of course he can. <laughs> I mean, of course he can. Why? If, if okay for people out there, if you haven't seen Captain EO, go. It's on YouTube. But last time, last I checked, it's on YouTube. Go check it out on YouTube. It's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. So this next thing is interesting to capture your moment. Private session with Disney Photo Pass photographers at Magic Kingdom. I think I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. I think this is like one of the smartest things they've done in a long time. To be totally honest, I think it's a brilliant idea. I'm surprised they didn't offer it sooner. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, but I don't know how I feel about it. Well, well, let's let's explain what it is. Go ahead, Tom. Explain. Oh, okay. Uh, I, oh, go ahead, Trevor. Trevor. You so yeah, ba- basically, it's you, you get a you get a session with a Disney Photo Pass photographer. Um. To in uh, Magic Kingdom during regular park hours, which is kind of surprising, but basically, uh, was it you get twenty minutes with them for, for fifty bucks? For fifty bucks, which I, I guess you know twenty minutes is a lot of time to get some pretty. That's what I'm saying. Out. I almost don't like this idea because I feel like it's going to like plug up the the photo pass spots. Well, I've heard they're pretty limited about the spots that they do. Like, so I don't, I don't think they have like a hundred people at, at eight o'clock. Every, I think it's too know. cheap, is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was surprised at how affordable it is. I, That's what I I'm saying. I think, I think it's almost too cheap. Yeah. But I, I guess like this is competing with people would hire private photographers to go and do photo sessions, right? So I don't know. Would they? People do. Yeah. That's, they, that's okay. a thing that happens. Yeah. yeah. So you have to get them into the park as well. Yeah. They, they, okay. or, or it's people that, you know, that live locally and have passes. an annual pass. Yeah. And yeah, they'll, the, they do it as a service on the side, gotcha. which, uh, obviously, I, Disney wants to limit that as much as possible, so offering their own version is a good way to counteract that. 
Well, and something I didn't put in here, by the way, is that if you have PhotoPass, so if you already paid for PhotoPass or if you have... Uh, so this price doesn't include any prints or anything like that. But if you already have paid for, for, um, memory maker and also, or if you have a AP and already have, uh, you know, photo pass, then it, all the photos are just included. You can just, they just show up in your photo pass. So, um, but, but and if you don't have either one of those things, you have to buy the photo separately. So, and I, I guess at that point, like if you're paying for a photo session, why would you not pay for at least memory maker? Yeah. If you didn't have it already, I mean, like, I think one of the best things about being an annual pass holder is having that. I think that's oh, great yeah. value. Yeah. To have as part of that. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think this is great. I, you know, you could use it for a graduation, anniversary, you know, whatever you want to use it for. And I think 20 minutes could be great. I, for 50 bucks, I think that's, it's awesome. As long as like Damon's saying, if they, you know, if they, if they had it nine o'clock every morning, if they had a hundred of these appointments scheduled, yeah, it probably could be a little bit of a problem, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming they're limiting it quite a bit. That would be my guess. I don't know, but I think this is a great idea. I think it's super smart. Yeah. Cause, cause then I guess the other part of that is, you know, it, it's not just the sessions, but they have to have enough people there to, to do the sessions like that. They're, they have to have a lot of photo pass photographers kind of sitting there waiting for for people to show up for these sessions so yeah. i i can't imagine that there's a ton of them because yeah it, it just doesn't seem logically to make a lot of sense to me <laughs> what that they can do this that well to have like a hundred you know photo oh, yeah. Fa- yeah. photo pass photographers sitting there waiting for people to come and you know tw- do 20 minute sessions yeah yeah that's that's i i totally agree I don't know. I think this is really cool. I think it's a great option and, and it's, it's, it's definitely something I could have used at, at different times before, you know, and, <laughs> especially for like a baby announcement. This is an amazing thing to do. And I guess it kind of answers, you, you know, remember when they first started introducing the, uh, the automatic photo the boxes, yeah, yeah, the boxes and people were saying, Oh, you know, that's taking away jobs from photo pass photographers. I, maybe this is part of that answer is, is instead of, the all the photographers having to sit at those locations they're now able to do these more custom uh sessions because they have the people free to do so now yeah maybe let's uh let's 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 move on to the next topic just unless you guys have either, anything to say about this because we should start wrapping up here and i think the last yeah. couple things we have are are pretty cool they're super boring i mean okay <laughs> what you find these i think these are cool Okay. <laughs> you don't find these patents interesting? I I left them at the end because I thought they were fun. Uh, you guys nerd so, over those. I, I don't really, you know, <laughs> patents to me until like you tell me there's a ride with them coming and it's going to be here in X amount of days. Like, yeah, okay. A lot but of see, patents that's part of the filed. fun about it. We don't know what they're going to use it for, and we can speculate. All right, you go ahead, Tom. Mm-hmm. You start. <laughs> Tell us all about these patents. All right. So the first one is uh, they they filed a patent for a haptic floor system uh, for large vibration based effects in rides and attractions. So uh, think of it this way: they they actually described it as when a super strong fictional character strikes strikes the floor nearby, basically that you'd feel it, right? And in 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 the picture in the uh, and fall over and sue. I mean, God. <laughs> <laughs> probably it probably wouldn't shake enough that you'd fall over. I would assume. I, I don't know. Or you're sitting down but, already. What's the head? Or you're sitting down already. <laughs> oh, or you're sitting. Yeah, we don't know. This could be something you're sitting, so you couldn't fall over. But essentially, the, in the picture of for the patent, and they have somebody that looks like they're the Hulk uh, smashing the floor. Uh, so it kind of just reading this, it kind of seems like me, something. Me and Trevor are going right to the link now. Yep, I have to see the link now. It, it looks like somebody wearing Hulk hands. That do they, you buy do they, at, like, do they look like they're sitting? Because they don't look like they're sitting. Not in that. They're not in the no. picture. They are. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy punching the floor is quite it's amazing yeah. right <laughs> yeah the he is very kind of focused hilarious. he's very focused on that floor well and I, everyone's kind of looking at him like are you okay dude <laughs> like what are you doing why are you punching? Hey, you know like, you know like when your dog goes and like they always say oh if your dog goes in the corner and sticks their head in the corner on the wall like there's something wrong it's kind of what this guy looks like <laughs> I just like that he's like they didn't even make him the Hulk. They just made him a guy that's wearing Hulk hands. <laughs> yeah, like, like they, they could have taken the time to draw the Hulk, but it, like the hands are detailed. But then it, it's like literally you can see the, <laughs> the guy doesn't even have eyes. <laughs> he doesn't. 
it's it's kind of an amazing picture. <laughs> it, it is because you know what else I noticed? Like everyone else is like shirts are kind of like you know fleshed out a little bit this guy is just like in the corner just very focused <laughs> super realistic hulk hands and then like just some lines <laughs> just dialed in the rest of it it's really funny <laughs> i feel like this is not going to happen because someone's going to fall over from it and then that's going to be it I, I I don't disagree with you necessarily. I, I it's funny to me that they're all standing in the picture because I would think that there would be some other. The, the, the one guy in the '80s bell bottom jeans looks like he's about to fall over. What kind of shoes does he have on? I can't even <laughs> tell. They're like they're like some sort of like mishmash slip on loafer with high heels. Like he's got some issues. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to post this picture along with the podcast episode, and now I feel like I have to because <laughs> it's oh, too that's funny. funny. Too. Yeah. I mean, my first thought is definitely this is like a Marvel, uh, well, like yeah, a Avengers Campus type of thing, right? Yeah. I mean, it's probably going to be pretty cool, but again, like I always worry about things like this. My wife has a big aversion to this specific sort of stuff, um, which is why she never wants to come to like the haunted house as well. That's not the only reason, but that's one of the reasons, right? The whole like shaking of the ground because they do that a lot in the haunted houses where they have those, you know, shaking ground things that she doesn't care for it. So uh, it will be interesting. I- I guess the thinking is, is that's probably why this is going to be different from a, a typical haunted house thing is I, I know what you're talking about. And this sounds to me more like, because usually to, to make that kind of effect, you would either need a subwoofer or like something with a, a lot of sound and vibration behind it. It sounds like they're trying to contain it just to a particular plate well, on the floor. Yeah. So the haunted houses, they use air. To do it. Right. So to make the move. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this seems like it's a, it's a lot more controlled. And honestly, I don't know if it would, you, it'd probably be noticeable, but not like, not I don't think it's going to be f- jarring. Yeah. I think it's going to, yeah, be more like subtle, the, the haptic phone sort of thing. You know, like how yeah. you feel on your phone, like that sort of sensor. But yeah, not shake enough that it would knock you over, but where you would feel, you would still feel the ground vibrating. Right. I mean, it would be cool, though, to see the Hulk come and just, like, you know, jump on the ground and no, what feel would be, it vibrate, right? Now, what would be awesome is if the Hulk came out, jumped on the ground, and everyone fell over. That, that would be fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, mean, as long as it wasn't me, that would be really fun. Just, just make sure we have me. waivers. And, and listen, let me also say, as long as nobody got hurt. That's right. But it would be very funny. Of course. Yeah. I, I, think, I think it's neat. I think there's a lot of cool applications for this, but who knows? what they'll use it for. So how about the second one? You guys want to read the second one? The second one looks cool too, to me. Yeah. I, I like this one, but, but that's because, um, the implications of it, it, it's uh, a portable peppers ghost effect is, is what they call it. So, so for anyone that's not familiar with peppers ghost, that's basically the haunted mansion. Every, all the effects where the ghosts appear and disappear. It's, it's a case of using, uh, lighting and, glass to and mirrors and, yeah and mirrors to to sh- to make it look like uh, a ghost is appearing and disappearing in a space when really there there's a like a solid object somewhere else and you're seeing the reflection of it so the idea with this is that it's a portable version and I, I like how they show it it looks like a car door with the with the seat next to it oh, so, yeah so the yeah. idea is is like you have a you have a, a projector on the outside of the window showing showing the the effect but it stays with the vehicle and, and it's so so versus the the haunted mansion where it's a it's a stationary effect somewhere this would move with the 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 ride vehicle which is yeah a, kind of an interesting application for that effect yeah it's i i find it really interesting i i it's I wonder how they can use this. I, I, I thought the example that the patent used, uh, for the Kilimanjaro safari was not the example I would have thought of, but it's still kind of cool where you'd be on the safari and like little like boxes might pop up above like a, a, like an elephant and say, you know, give a fun fact about, about the elephant. That's kind of cool. It's, you know, it's essentially, we're talking augmented reality, right? That's essentially what we're talking about here. But I, I don't know. I, I, my other, my initial thought for this was, cause we don't know what this is going to look like, but the, the, the actual 
what they're talking about here sounds like what the Spider-Man ride is going to be like. The the Spider-Man ride they're building for Avengers Campus, it sounds like there's going to be some things in the screen of that, in the window that you're looking out of, that are, are kind of like this. But I don't know if that's the case or not. I don't know if that's that's what this is going to be used for, if this is some, for something else. I, I have no idea. Yeah, that that was actually my initial thought, too, was um, kind, of, kind of like how Spider-Man has his, uh, his suit is, has augmented reality built into it because of Tony Stark. That, you know, that you could give that kind of effect to the people on the ride where they, they see what Spider-Man sees, but it, it's, it's not, a, there's no requirement to have glasses or anything because it's built into the ride vehicle, basically. Yeah, exactly. That was my first thought when I read this. Is, is yeah. that's where they were going? I was not thinking about Kilimanjaro. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess seeing <laughs> animal facts is cool too. <laughs> yes, I, it would be. I mean, it would be kind of cool, but it also makes it sound like they're just going to get rid of the tour guide and have buses that drive themselves, and and you know, just have little fun facts that pop up on screens. You know, <laughs> not that they could do that or would do that because that would be really difficult to to handle with animals. But regardless, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, I, I can't see the elephants going for for the automated no. thing. <laughs> no, no, that wouldn't be cool. Yeah, uh, this this last one. I don't even quite understand it. It's interesting looking. So it's basically what this, this technology appears to be is uh, connected to a user device. So, you know, like a smartphone Mm -hmm. and it would allow the user to interact with the environment uh, simulated near the vehicle via screens or projections. Oh, I wonder if this one is actually related to the one we just talked about. If they would use these together um, and to uh, enhance an interactive gamer experience, uh, physical effects like lighting or changes, wind would be used uh, to create a sense of reality. Uh, and then it would have stages or levels uh, where the user could progress at any time and restart at any point. So it, it, to the connected vehicle. So the, the, the actual patent itself mentions, you know, like buses, like, but I can't imagine this being used on a Walt Disney transportation bus it just that doesn't make any sense to me dude that would be like the best though when you think about yeah. it there needs to be something for the buses like this would be great and then you could use like an extra burst of air conditioning for the wind like oh, this would be awesome it's possible yeah mm. so so think of or okay i was gonna say think about when you're in the magical express but neither of you have ridden the magical express so never mind I've been on it once. I've been on it once. <laughs> okay. I was on it once like 15 years ago. Okay. So, so when you get on the magical express, they, uh, it, it's one of those, uh, charter buses, the, those mirrors buses, and they have, they have, uh, screens throughout the whole thing. And as you're riding to or from, uh, uh, your hotel, they, they usually have trivia on there. And it's funny because, you know, people sitting on the bus, you, you'll hear like people will talk amongst their party or you'll, sometimes you'll even get people talking back and forth with each other about the different trivia questions. And this seems like a, a further extension of that. And, and yeah, taking it to that next step, like you were saying, you know, having just the, the, the buses between the, the parks. Really? You could just do straight up trivia on mm-hmm. the buses or anything that they have at like Soren. Like that on the buses via your smartphone with Teams would be the best, right? And, and oh yeah, that would be good. Yeah, it seems too easy. I, I want to take this a step further because you guys haven't seen this, but it's pretty awesome when it happens. In uh, in California Adventure before World of Color, they actually have a game where you connect to a website, and whoever wins the game actually gets control of the light effects on Mickey's Fun Wheel before the show. So, so there's actually. Uh, a competitive game and, and cool. and yeah, at the very end, whoever has it basically gets a little menu where they can change the, the big Ferris wheel that, you know, everyone else is looking at, they can sit there and change the effects around on the Ferris wheel. So, so again, something similar to that, that this Ferris wheels are evil though. So, well, Mickey, Mickey's <laughs> well, fun. That wheel, one. Yeah. That, that, that one, one is terrifying. Absolutely. And I love it, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be the one ride that I don't think I would ever ride. Why not? I don't like Ferris wheels. But that one is, it's, I, I don't think I would. So do. good. I'm with you, Damon. I, I can't do Ferris wheels. I don't like heights like that. I mean, I could ride roller coasters that go up that high. I, I can't do Ferris wheels. I'm sorry. But, can't but, do it. but the swinging cars are the best. You what, what was that? What was the episode? <laughs> what, what movie was it where like the Ferris wheel just rolls away? Like, I, I want to feel, I want to feel like it's something like, uh, there's lots of, movies. lots of them, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, no, no, no Ferris wheels for me. Sorry. Nothing that can roll away. 
It, it, it's not even that. It's the when when the moving cars slide you down and you feel like you're going to go right off the edge into the water. It's so good. If I feel like I'm going to fall into water, I kind of feel better about that. Yeah, it's but not rolling away. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you you would just land in the in in the lagoon there. Wouldn't wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, <laughs> but but anyway, back back to back to this patent back to application. This. Yeah, yeah. To me, it, what what if? No, Trevor, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Here's what it is. What if? Whoever wins the trivia gets their first stop on the bus. <laughs> so, like, if you're at Saratoga and they go, oh, sorry, you guys lost. We got to go to the carousel first. Sorry. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that Love that it. would be evil, but, yeah, uh, it, it would be amusing for sure. Well, this app also is supposed to, like, trigger stuff to happen in the vehicle, too. So, like, lighting effects and, and projectors and all sorts of fun stuff are supposed to happen with this app. So... I'm, we shall I, say. I'm down with that. I mean, th- that stuff's fun. But and, and even like Damon said, you know, just just having trivia, I think, you know, winning trivia and having an effect to go off because you got the trivia right, that would, I mean. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. All right. All right I, think we're, I think we're done. But, but wait, before we wrap up, though. I just want to give a shout out to Allison, who's on our uh, our group, who makes our DVC bingos. Oh, well, yeah. well, well, I oh, appreciate yeah. all of her DVC bingos. I'm still upset that I haven't been able to bingo on either one of them. So I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe this week she makes a DVC bingo that I might actually be able to bingo at. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I haven't done it yet, but I need to do it. I, I I lost the post at one point and I, I didn't go back and do it, but I need to do it. There's two of them now. I haven't bingoed at either one of There's them. There's a part two? There's a part two. And I haven't bingoed at either one of them. I'm a little upset about that. <laughs> But again, it, they're, they're, that's a great idea, and we do appreciate them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Trevor, you want to wrap us up? All right. <clears throat> okay. So, as usual, um, outside of you know talking to us on the Facebook group, if you wanted to get a hold of us directly, you can reach us at welcomehomepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, I, I think we're getting less emails there because I think more people are actually hitting us up on Facebook at this point. Wouldn't you say, yeah, Tom? I, we, we yeah. get very few emails now. We used to get a lot more emails, which is good because it's easier to respond on Facebook, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, we get a lot more in the Facebook group, which yeah. is uh welcome home Disney wait lists. Yeah. Like so, so the email address is still there for those that want to use it. But uh, wait, did you hear how enthusiastic Tom was about the name? Super make sure we, <laughs> Trying to make sure that we all not. I think, Tom, we're out of our window. So if you really feel that you need to change it, by all I, means. I don't know what to change it to. But I, I, like I just the like list. Damon went rogue one day and just changed it. And then was like, I okay, definitely guys, went rogue. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those things for asking forgiveness after. I'm That's like, it. you know, I just hate this. I'm going to have to change it. And then <laughs> I, I'm okay with it. I, I don't I'm fine with it. Bad. I'm yeah. fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted something that would be like, if you do like type in Disney waitlist, like we come up, I don't have to like get so specific that like I have to tell you to the letter of which one it is. You kind of know what I mean? That was my problem with the other one. It was too generic. It was hard yeah. to find. Yeah, that's fair. So, so yeah, if, if, if you want to ask questions or, or anything, yeah, look for the welcome home Disney waitlist on Facebook and, uh, and yeah, we, uh, we like hearing from you guys. We, uh, we also like the conversations that you guys have in, in the group as well. Uh, outside of there, uh, you can uh, check out the website, which is welcomehomepodcast.com. Uh, I kind of was working on that too. And yeah. I got, a sh- I hurt my shoulder, so it's going to probably be a little bit longer, but, uh, we do have some things. Yeah. I don't know if really okay. planned over there, but it should look a little bit nicer once I, I heal up over here. Yeah, the, that's why I added it back to the list because I, I appreciate that. Yeah. But I did, I did at least put up the last two episodes now that automatically go up there, which I thought was at least something. Yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, it's we're improving nice. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so check a, check out our website. Uh, see see what we're doing to change things up there. Uh, as usual, if you want to find us on Facebook, uh, we're Welcome Home Podcast. And if you want to connect on Twitter or Instagram, it's Welcome Home Pod and Welcome Home Picks. Those basically mirror Facebook, so you can see all of our of our posts from there. But uh, really, the, the majority of our, our activity is on Facebook at this point, either through the Welcome Home Podcast like, like page. Like all old, old people do yeah. these days. Or, or the Facebook group. We, I think we all, we all like our Facebook and 
Yeah. And uh, if you decide you wanted to grab some merchandise, you can go to store.welcomehomepodcast.com and you know pick up a T-shirt or a magnet or a mug or something like that. And, and we we did talk about that. A lot of things happen. Like there's a pre-show that happens, and we always get you know to talk because we don't talk all the time. Besides through Facebook, the three of us. And and Tom has some great ideas for some new upcoming merchandise that may be exclusive, as we always like to do. Yep. We'll we'll see. We got some stuff coming up for sure. We'll yeah. we'll do some we'll do some neat stuff sometime here in the future. Yeah, and uh, we'll. I, I guess the going back to questions and stuff. I mean, if if there's certain kinds of merchandise you guys would like to see you know we'll we'll see what we can do um obvi- obviously we we can't you know i i'm not going to make a welcome home podcast car wrap or anything like that but uh, <laughs> speak for yourself trevor <laughs> yeah okay. okay i already have mine on what are you talking about i, I, I got put on last week oh i see how it is okay <laughs> people look at my car very strangely it's, yeah it's very odd yeah yeah I, I still would like uh clings but we haven't gotten there yet yeah so we we that, do have magnets though. We do have magnets. Yeah, but if you had if you had clings, I'd be all in. I'd be all in well, on. We'll clings. see what we can do. We can get some clings. We can get some clings. Exactly. So so stuff like that. We we would like to. If anybody has any thoughts on that, we'd love to hear it. And post on Facebook. Make Tom get clings. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> and outside of that, uh, we also like uh, getting reviews from you guys. We've actually gotten uh, a couple of good reviews in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah glowing reviews. Yeah, we're we're super happy for that. We we love those reviews. Keep them coming, guys. And uh, and again, it, it helps us get better, and it helps people find the podcast because, believe it or not, those reviews do affect how much it pops up on people's feeds when they go looking for for podcasts. And let's be honest, though, how many people have listened to the other Welcome Home podcast that changed their name? Wait, they changed their name? Well, the Welcome Home podcast, like oh, the, yeah, the yeah. Welcome Home podcast, they used to be called something else. How many I'm gonna, people have I'm going to trademark Welcome Home Podcast, and I'm going to sue them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've listened to them. I've listened to them. Are they yeah. good? They're, they're interesting. Again, I tell you, there should be a joint episode about packing for Disney. What they, wait, what do they talk about? I don't even know. I talk about like just like home things, like you know, cleaning the house. Oh, what was oh, one of the one? Okay. Oh, one one of the episodes. This, this is crazy that we're even talking about this. One of the episodes was like talking about chores and like who should be doing certain chores and things like that in the house. Oh, okay. Yeah, Interesting. Stuff like that. It's very home oriented. Hence, welcome, welcome home. Welcome home. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so not Disney, just welcome home. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so yeah, please review us. <laughs> and of course so that we can, that we can get, so when we type in, really our goal is at the end of the day, we want to be able to type in welcome home podcast and them not come up first. Like they do now. That's really our real goal. That's the goal. <laughs> the dream exactly the dream that we're striving for uh, so of course don't forget to subscribe to welcome home podcast so you can be reminded every time we release a new episode you can find us on apple Podcasts, google play music google podcast tune in stitcher spotify just about any podcast app you can find our show just search for welcome home find the one that says disney not uh you know house cleaning tips or whatever you know they're they're other things they say in their title <laughs> on that show. Uh, just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company, and as such, any and all opinions we express on the show are our own. So uh, consult a DVC representative or you know a cast member for more information about anything we talked about today. Huge thank you to DVC Resale Market for continuing to be uh, just the best partner uh, to this podcast. We uh, really, really appreciate them and and appreciate their partnership over the years. Three years now, they've they've been hanging in with us so uh of course join us next time for more disney parks discussion more dvc talk we hope to see you all real soon this is skipper albert awall the voice of the jungle signing off from welcome home podcast on the dvc we do a hug when we hit a chair how she can cuddle is no